Our next race, Dean, is our 16 expert category. I'd like to welcome everybody back to the BMX Pro Spectacular Finals. In this moto, we have Tim Kakoris, Bubba Hayes, John Anderson, V. Latham, Richie Anderson, Dave Campbell, Wayne Bateman, and David Wilson. These are our 16 expert category. They are up on the gate. These guys are the top experts in the world competing here in the Los Angeles for the BMX Pro Spectacular Finals. The gate is underway. Dean, who should we be looking for? Richie Anderson, number one. He does not have that number one on his plate for uh, any old reason. There he goes, another hole shot. Richie Anderson coming through again. This is an amateur race. That means they go one lap through the center. The S is now coming through. Richie Anderson, number one, continuing to hold that lead, followed by number 2A, Tim Kokoris. Here they come down that back straight. Richie Anderson powering through. A lot of smoke on this guy. Richie Anderson really walking away with it. In number two again, Tim Kokoris. It's going to be Richie Anderson coming across the finish line. Richie Anderson, Tim Kokoris, and coming up number eight on the outside, Dave Campbell. And then Dean again. Here's... Here's a starting gate that we're talking about. The 16 expert category coming off this gate. Let's talk about how the gate drops and how wide it is. Well, the gate is electronically operated. We've got a green light, then a red light. Now, as you can see, it's a very, very fair gate, and then it's followed by that first jump, which is a great equalizer. So if somebody happens to get a great jump out of that gate, well, the jump's going to help to equalize things going into that first corner. How about that first jump there, Dean? Well, it seems to be uh, fairly well handled by most of the racers here today. It's not very abrupt, and they just kind of speed jump it, as it's called. Well, we'll see this class speed jump at our next class up, 17 expert category, 17 expert main. We'll take a quick look at who's in it. Travis Chappers, Troy Daniels, Rich Fireside, Rick Palmer, Mike Minnell, Charlie Williams, Kevin Hull, and Chris Seaman. That's our 17 expert category. These guys are just one step away from the B Pro class. Dean, do any guys jump from 17X straight into the A Pro category? Right. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to see a couple of these guys transferring to Pro in the next uh, coming months. I think these could, could very well be the last race for them as amateurs. Watch Charlie Williams on the inside. He's got the lead. That's number two, Charlie Williams. Dean, what's the strategy as you go going throughout a race? Well, since this is a shorter course and the pros are running, Charlie's going flat out. He's not holding back at all. You can see he's going very strong. And uh, he's got quite a good lead going into that back straight. All he's going to do is protect his lead going into this final corner. He'll have the win. We saw one of the guys take kind of a face plan as we see again our leader going over the troughs. And the face plans really happen as a result of slipping a pedal. But it's number two, our winner, Charlie Williams, winning it all here in the 17 expert category. Dean, a lot of the pros this year have been playing the Valley Midway video game series. Dean, here's a replay on that 16 expert category. We see the winner racer in second place. A little bit cranking too far into it. Looks like number six, and that's going to be Palmer. Palmer comes around that corner. What happens on a fall like that? Well, I'll tell you what. I, it, tire inflation is very, very important. It looks like he had his tires a little bit overinflated. They were a little bit skittish. The front end washed out, as they call it. And he put his foot down and just went down. <laughs> One of the things that our pros have been doing along this series is playing a series of video games from the Bally Midway Games Company. Now, Bally Midway, of course, probably most famous for their pinballs earlier in the last couple of decades. But now they're into video games. We had a chance to talk to Rennie Roker about the video game series. We know this is an exciting part. Valley Midway decided that they wanted to be a part of our show because there's so many youngsters in the same age group that play their games, which are some of the finest in the world. So what we did was we decided to find out how good the pros were off the track on the machines. And Valley Midway put up three fine machines as prizes for the top pro who could get the top points. And the way it worked is each pro had an opportunity to play the video games and the pinball machines. And whoever had the most amount of points at the end was a lucky winner and he walked away with a pinball machine, a video arcade machine, and a tabletop machine from Valley Midway. And it, uh, it's all right. It's about $12,000 worth of video equipment. And if you excuse me, I have to go. With... Hey, guys. Okay, my turn. There we go. Uh... Yeah. Look at that pinball machine. Next up, Dean, is exactly what everybody has come for. The final pro main in the 1983 Pro Spectacular Series. Again, the pro main, $15,000 purse money, and the car goes to number one overall. Our racers in this moto, once again, Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Larry, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarevich, Eric Group, and Greg Grubbs. Greg Hill at this point, the odds out favorite of going number one overall. He's been playing this one all the way through. Dean, any comments? Keep an eye on the two inside positions between uh, Greg Hill and that spoiler, 
is the beat. That's Miller in second place. So it's Hill, Miller, Leary on the outside in third, and we've got Monkarevich in fourth. Again, these pros do two laps around the track. In number one spot right now, number three, Greg Hill. The last stop on the Super Circuit was in Los Angeles. He won three out of three mains. That means finishing number one. Although at this time around, the first two rounds were won by Stu Thompson. We've got Greg Hill out on a real storm marker here. And Greg Hill would like to finish up being number overall, number one, with a nice win here. Keep an eye on Leary, Miller, and Lonkarevich. Now it looks like just Miller and Lonkarevich drop back a little bit, but keep an eye on Leary. He can very well pull the last minute pass here. These, Anything's possible. These pro mates will be going back and forth. The 15 grand is going to be up for grabs. Here comes Greg Hill and Harry Leary, followed by Clint Miller and Pete Lonkarevich. It was Stomp and Stu the first two rounds around in number place, but Greg Hill determined to show who was absolutely the number one overall pro, really putting the foot down here in this very last round of the pro main. We see Harry Larry here trying to chase him, but not able to. This title, definitely the most prestigious title ever possibly in the history of bicycle motocross, a whole year long of racing, and these top five contenders that had a shot for it all told us how they felt about what it would be to be the number one overall pro. This series will decide the number one pro, and I'd like to be it, and it, it will mean a lot to whoever wins it. <laughs> Winning it would mean that you're the best because whoever wins will be the best pro for 83. I'd like to be the number one ESPN pro. And if I can come across that finish line and, and know that I won the number one, I really don't know what I'll do. I may just fall off and cry, I don't know. You know, as far as winning the series, whoever wins it, um, it's, I would say, the best series to win because of the TV coverage. A lot of people are seeing this sport that aren't didn't know about it, you know, and it's going to help the sport a lot. So that's really prestigious to win it. And Greg Hill is our winner. We'll be right back with our final check presentations and car awards right after this. Let's look at our 11 expert category, and Carmen was quick to point out that uh, the 11-year-old bracket really has more than just the expert category. Carmen, you care to explain? Well, in all the age groups, uh, there's usually three different categories. There's your beginner classes, your novice classes, and your expert classes. The, uh, the beginners are the people that just get on the bike for the first time and pedal around the track just to get started to see if they like the sport. So if I had a son, said it was 10 or 11 years old, and he wanted to get into BMX racing, he would start in the 11 beginner category. Sure, you plug him right in there. You let him ride with riders in the same category as he is, the same proficiency. Shut him up. Our race, our get, race gate is getting ready, and we're going to be talking about this race as they go okay, and talking ready. about the difference between the beginning class, the novice okay. class, and the expert class. These, again, are the 11-year-old novice category. And the gate here, as we can see, is a slow gate, meaning that the gate drops slowly, which some of the riders like, some of them don't like. As we see the Raiders Chrysler's coming through, he had a little bit of a spill there. Some of the riders tying up, and the guy in the last place is just forced to stay in last. Going around, if you notice, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference between the, the riding capabilities of the novice riders right now that you're looking at and the riders that you looked at in the last moto. The novices have gotten so trick and so good in the last couple of years. The equipment that they're riding is much, much better than it was three and four years ago, and it really shows in their riding style. What's the difference then, between novice and expert? How do you advance into an expert class? By the amount of accountable awards that you win in your local racing and in your national racing that you do. And it's an upgrade which is carefully designed so that the kids don't go upgrading uh, too soon and getting out of class. So these guys are pushing in the novice category to win as many awards and trophies as they can to qualify into the expert. Right. It's a similar situation that they do with the uh, B and A pros. They have, uh, they have categories in the professionals, A and B. Uh, you have to win so many dollars or so many awards to go into your A category. Is it, the same, is it the same for a beginner rider in a class moving into a novice category? Is, is it again based on merit? Right, exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. Coming up on our gate is our second round of our pro main, and I'll tell you, this pro main is, got, is filled with some of the biggest names in racing. I haven't seen a main like this in quite a while. We'll go straight to lane number one for second round, and it's John Pyant. Pyant took sixth in the first moto, and he's working his Olympic scoring. Next to him, from the Diamondback team, Harry Leary in lane number two. In lane number three, these guys again side by side, Eddie King. Eddie winning that last one with some trick riding. And next to him on the Murray team, Anthony Sewell. Anthony Sewell in lane four. Lane five on the GT team, Greg Hill, our current right, series up. leader. Greg would like to win it here and add a little bit more of a cushion to his points. Brian Patterson next to him on Patterson racing in lane six. Lane number seven next to Patterson, another guy on the Murray team, Scott Clark. And outside of that is going to be Greg Grubbs, who has some fancy okay, riding to get himself ready. a good finish in the last one, lane eight. Pro main, the gate is up, and this is going to be That's round okay. number two for the pro main. And these guys are more determined than ever after kind of a fluke first round. The gate is dropped. Eddie King getting a slow start out of the gate. And out of the front, 
Solo and Clark out front. Again, the Murray team taking a wide line on the inside. It's going to be some trouble. Ryan Patterson, number four, but Sewell still in the lead. It's Scott Clark pushing on the inside. Watch it's Sewell and Clark. Patterson now coming in second. Outside, Harry Larry making a run by the back team. Sewell still leading it. It's number 17. Patterson pushing it in second. Greg Hill making his move on the inside. We had a couple of this turn before. Hill does a double double with the ball. Coming out of the turn. Sewell takes another breath and goes down charging on the back line. It's Patterson. Harry Larry in the black helmet following him. Hill in fourth. He needs a good finish order to come into the top five. Outside, we have a couple more riders. King back in the pack, but it's going to be a tight sprint to the finish. Patterson's going to charge him, and Patterson may have caught Anthony Sewell. Perry Leary in third, and we have Pryant and Hill close between fourth and fifth. Eddie King bringing up the back along with Scott Clark and Greg Grubb. A lot of moving and grooving in the background there. Let's watch it here from the final jump of the track. A very close race. We talked about a wide track and things getting bunched up, and they certainly are. Here's Sewell coming over the step jump. You can see Leary trying to make an inside move on Patterson. Patterson says, no way. I'm throwing my arm and elbow, my whole body out there. I'm going to lead you through that turn. You can see Patterson doing. The rest of the pros, it's Sewell coming around the back. Patterson swooping down into the bottom here, trying to push it on. He pours on the heat, trying to come across the finish line first, and it's looking like a dead heat. It might have gone to Patterson. It's really close to call. Here are our final results. Brian Ryan Patterson it. edging out Anthony Sewell with a bottom line inside move. Sewell coming in second. Harry Leary in third. And Greg Hill, our current overall leader right now, in fourth. So Harry, Harry Leary just came off of a bad year last year. You know, he had a really serious leg injury that uh, held him up for the bulk of the year, for the end of last year. And he's really, really coming on strong. I don't think he's 100% yet. And I think you're going to see some fast racing coming up in the very near future from Harry Leary. Anthony Sewell, who in St. Louis finished with a, with a fifth, and who overall in our point standings is somewhere around 11th spot, is doing very well. If we use our Olympic scoring system, Sewell has a third and a second place. Um, Harry Leary is doing real well with a second place finish in the first moto and a top four finish in this last moto. So Harry Leary could really come through here, and maybe he's the guy that's going to walk away with that $2,500 first place check. Again, all of these riders competing for... Um, overall series points, 80 points to the winner, 70 points for second place, third um, points, third place has other points. We'll be going over that point system a little bit later. But these guys are not only competing for cash, they're competing for overall series points. Round number two on the pro main, very successful. And we'll be back for a more exciting pro and other amateurs right after this. Uh, Boy, you know, we had a box floating around here somewhere, Carl. They all melted it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, those pudding puffs are great. And Danielle Couch, the girl I was talking to, uh, is also the younger sister of Chad Couch, who had kind of a disappointing fall in one of the earlier motos that we saw today. Speaking of girls and powder puffs and all of that, right now we've got a 12- and 13-year-old girl, main event, our main moto. And as these girls get lined up on the starting gate, Carmen, maybe we can talk about how girls started racing in VMX. Well, you know, every girl in the world probably has an older brother or her cousin or something that does it. And, you know, they're getting very competitive and they want to do just like the boys do. They don't want to get left behind. I got a seven-year-old daughter that got into it because of her brother and uh, I can't keep her off the track. Is the day ever going to come where we're going to see girls competing as pros, you think? Yeah, very, very shortly. I think you're going to see a couple coming up uh, probably next year. Is that right? Yeah, they're trying to get it through, and I hope they do. I think it'll be a real good for the girls' classes, and I think it's going to make it awfully interesting race. <laughs> okay, is everybody ready? So BMX may be turning into a unisex type of a sport here as we have girls battling it out with guys eventually in the very near future. These girls are underway. Let's watch their approach to this track and their attitude in racing. Torker Rider had the hole shot there for a minute, but she looked like she might have slipped the pedal in the first grade. we got a number seven. Rider, that's uh, coming through the, uh, the second turn there. She's holding on to the lead pretty good. You know, if you, if you didn't see the long hair come out of these girls' helmets, you really couldn't tell that they were guys or girls. They're getting so aggressive anymore. They're riding just like the boys do, and it's really, really hard to tell. I mean, it's a it's a situation that uh, it, uh, it's, it's, I'm really pleased with. I like to see the girls in a competitive sport, and BMX is probably the most competitive sport you can find on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Heather on the inside in the white and the blue is not doing a really good job, and the outside rider is putting a move on. Just made a beautiful move in that last turn on the outside. These girls they're going for it. They're totally pedaling and breathing and pushing and totally reaching for that finish line. Forget calling them girls, man. They go for it just like the guys do. Herman, who breaks the biggest piece of that $5,000 purse? We also are going to break it down and to see where, who goes into the lead for the overall point series standings for our series points. We have another race coming up right now on the block. And this is our what we call a 14 and over open. Now the 14 and over open is an interesting class. An open category means that it's open for anybody, that whether they're expert or a novice, 
to go straight into it. So we have, a, you can be 15 years old, you can be 16, 17. A lot of people consider it the showcase moto of the sport. Do you agree with that, Carmen? Well, it's all the big guns usually, and it gives the, it gives the slower riders or the younger riders a chance to see how they stack up against the, their peers, really. Uh, it, it allows a conglomerate of ages and proficiencies to get into it and go for it. This one right here are the fastest kids usually in the world that are right here in this moto okay, right here, the 14 over open. Not only is it a battle for speed, it's also a big battle for psych in these type of things. A lot of psych and BMX racing, and you got a 14. Oh my gosh, we have a bad spill on that. The gate hung up a little bit. It may have been a false start. The racers are looking backwards to see if they're going to call them over again, and it looks like they are. Let's take another look at that, and Carmen, perhaps maybe you can explain why the big pileup at that starting gate. Here it is again. Well, the starting gate is held by a magnet right there, and it seems like the riders are anticipating the gate a little bit. Look at that punishment these guys are taking. And that's a concrete face, by the way. That's not a that's not a dirt face. That's concrete. And well, these I guys, wish he had gloves, huh? Boy, he's, I think in the next race he's going to be wearing some. Yeah, he's looking see? at his hands already. Yeah, these guys not. are forced to ride in pain, and looking at that guy's hand reminds me of Greg Hill's hand that I saw after the second round in the pro main. Greg's riding with some pain in this next round. On his left hand, he's got a big bandage, and he did just about what looks like to be the same thing on that. A big chunk out of his palm so these guys are regrouping here this 14 and open 14 and over open we talked about this class being the showcase class of the sport we could see some of the aggro-ness or the aggressiveness in that class as those guys were dying for that gate to drop and to get under a good lead well it's a, it's a it's a situation that sometimes can't be helped it seemed to me that the gate was functioning properly on this last uh, start just that a couple riders anticipated it but uh it's one of those situations that uh, you can't tell really what happened here's this guy wishing he had a glove sponsor at this point in time amen brother if he does have a glove spotter he's going to be awfully mad <laughs> <laughs> so these guys may be resetting up the gate in bmx racing almost like a drag strip starting line they've got a christmas tree which you can see on the far left of the screen that hangs above the gate and the, and the Christmas tree literally just lights down to the bottom. The racers are watching that light. There also are some horns that go along with it. Right now they're testing the gate to make sure that it's gonna drop all right. It's a kind of an air compression type gate. And I talked with some of the pros earlier and uh, they were talking about the gate and the fact that it's a slow moving gate. Here's those Christmas tree lights that we were talking about. Red at the top, then two, orange, two oranges or amber in the middle and then a green at the bottom probably one of the fairest starting systems you can have because there's a lot of kids in BMX that have some physical impairments either in hearing or you know they just they don't hear well or they don't hear at all mm -hmm. the lights give them a chance to have an equal start with the rest of the riders in their grouping the, the horns also hey, allow the riders to concentrate and look wow. down at their tire and listen for the sounds you can see those guys stir at the lights there and the gate drops a clean start in the 14 and over open category are underway now again kids of all ages racing this one another spin out in this first turn the track getting a little bit dry and number 53 from Schwinn is tearing it up 14 and over Mike Polson, Mike Polson in the lead right now for Schwinn. Polson has done well in the other amateur races throughout the series, but somebody number 87 is putting the move on. Big John putting the move on Polson, but Polson able to hold him off. John in white from 09 is on the outside. Mike Polson on the inside from Schwinn, still able to put the door down on him. Here's a chance for John on the outside to make a move, but it's going to be Polson all the way. Mike Polson in this 14 and over open category coming through, maintaining his whole shot and hanging on all the way through. Polson is one of the strong riders, and whenever I mentioned earlier, D, about conditioning, Mike Polson is probably one of the most conditioned riders on a circuit as far as an amateur goes. When you say conditioning, Carmen, are you talking about running? You're talking about lifting weight? So these guys are going to be hell bent for leather, trying to get the best position finish that they can. Scott Clark in lane number one, bicycle number plate number eight, Scott Clark. Next to him, Brian Patterson in lane number two, one of the tallest pros on the circuit, one of the fastest. He has a lot of power. Greg Grubbs from JAG BMX in lane number three. Greg Grubbs. Lane number four, Eddie King, and Eddie is looking good. Eddie King had a first place finish in the first moto. He's going to be tough. John Pyant from the Huffy team in lane number five. Pyant finishing fifth in that last one and sixth before he may be out of it. Anthony Sewell in lane number six. Anthony looking sweet. He has a total of five points Olympic scoring. On the outside, Mr. Menace, Greg Hill in lane number seven. On the far outside, lane number eight, Harry Leary. This is going to be a bad call for Harry Leary. He has, has five total points Olympic scoring. $2,500 first place, $5,000 first, 80 points for the guy that finishes. A clean go. start. Sewell gets a bad start out of the gate. No, that was Clark. But Brian Patterson takes the lead, and here's Eddie King, 3X. Eddie King's the guy that won it all in Detroit. He's pushing hard with Brian.
Larry Patterson behind him. Eddie Patterson. Hill on the inside. Hill was pushing like that. Harry Larry behind him. We go down the hill. It's King in first. We've got an action on the back strip. It's not going to affect our leaders. King in the lead. Hill in second. Harry Larry, who had a great attack after pushing leg, trying to get back on the swing of things. Down and back. He pulls it off. All right. It's King and Larry, one and two. Hill and Patterson behind him. Hill going to try to catch Larry back up again. Can. John Pyatt in fifth, trying to catch Patterson on the inside. Pyatt making a move on Patterson. He does sneak him out. It's Eddie King in the lead. Eddie King. Harry Larry going to sew it up, it looks like. Greg Hill in third. Pyatt in fourth. And Brian Patterson in fifth. And Harry Larry may have come here to accomplish exactly what he wanted. The Diamondback guys very happy with their finishes. Eddie King winning it. Harry Leary in second. We're going to have all the final results when we come back. Maybe we can take another look at this race. A very good race at the finish. There's Eddie King catching his breath. And we're going to be back to get our total results wrap up to see how these guys battled out. We're going to be adding up their finish points. Our final results for that last final round. And this is just the results for this race. Eddie King in first. Harry Leary in second. Greg Hill in third. And John Pyant in fourth. We'll be doing their totals here. And when we come back, we're going to have the final results for overall racing right here at the East Hills BMX track. And we'll also have our update on our overall leader for this incredible ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit Series. That was one super race. <laughs> Here's Eddie and Harry Larry from the Diamondback team. And we'll be back to them and everything else right after this. Don't take off all the speeds right here. So this is how it all came down at the East Hills BMX track stop number four on the Pro Spectacular Circuit. Harry Larry in first, Eddie King in second. With me now is our overall winner for today's event, Harry Larry And Harry, Rennie Roker's got a check for $2,500 for that first place finish. Harry, congratulations for you and your teammate for coming one and two. Best of luck to you in the rest of the series. Thank you, Rennie. It's a pleasure to be part of the ESPN Pro Spectacular. So that's our winner today, and we're going to be wrapping it up here from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Be sure to catch our next stop, which will be in Vegas for this Pro Spectacular series. I'm D. David Morton on behalf of Carmen Encino. Thanks for watching. Presents the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. It is the Grand Prix of professional racing. Going all over the nation with the largest purse ever. And this time we're in Las Vegas, Nevada for Super Circuit round number five, the fifth stop on this Grand Prix. Las Vegas not only known for its exciting gambling casino, but also the beautiful and scenic Lake Mead. And also in the outskirts of Las Vegas, Hoover Dam, an incredible sight in itself. But as far as I'm concerned, you can leave all that right where you are. In fact, you can sit on it. I'm D. David Morton, and here with me is Dean Bradley. And Dean, we got some kind of action here today. You're absolutely right, David. If by chance you haven't been able to check out some of the previous races, you have really missed some incredibly exciting racing. We've not only gone to four major cities throughout the U.S., but we've given away almost $20,000 in prize money. It really has been an incredible series. And the thing about it is that, Dean, even though we've got the top racers, no one's been able to break away with it yet. Absolutely. That's what proves this is the most valid pro series in BMX today. Nobody has run away with it, and it, the car is still up for grabs, as is all that prize money. And look, let's take a quick look here at where we've already been on the um, BMX circuit this year. Again, we started in Miami, and after Miami, we went to Detroit. Then we went to St. Louis, to Pittsburgh. Now we're in Las Vegas. We still have Las, Las Los Angeles to go, then Chicago for the World Championships, $15,000 in prize money there, and also the winner for the overall gets a new car worth $10,000. Dean, the total points and the total prizes, the total everything for this, over $55,000 for professional BMX racing. Has it, is it unbelievable? Has it come too fast? No, it hasn't come too fast at all. This has been long overdue, a series of this type, and it's being very well received by the pros, and obviously the spectators are loving it. Well, every race that we go to, the pros get more excited for it, and we're going to be right back with our very first race, our pro semi my moto number one. Well, let's take a look here as we go to commercial at each of our leaders as we get down to our title for 1983, the Pro Spectacular. We're here for our very first Pro Semi Moto number one, round one, and let's take a quick look at who's in this lineup. On the far right hand side of the gate in um, lane number one is uh, Bobby Woods. Bobby Woods in lane number two. Next to Bob is number 15, Clint Miller. 
Next to him, Toby Henderson, number three, in lane number three. Next to him with number 93 on his number plate, Dan, Donny Otherton, number four, in lane four. In lane five is Eddie King. Lane six is Rod Beckering. Lane seven, Matt Harris. And lane eight, Brian Patterson. So that's our lineup right now as we are about to get underway here for our very first Pro Semi-Moto 1 Round 1. We have two Semi-Motos, 16 racers, and we're going to be narrowing it down to our top eight. But our racers are at the gate. They're ready to go. And we're ready to go as soon as they give them an official start. We have a Christmas tree light that gives them the official start. And Dean, who do you like in this heat? Well, I want you to keep an eye on the left-hand side of that gate. We've got Patterson, Harris, Rod, Bronco Beckering, and Eddie King. Now, keep an eye on those guys. I think they're going to get the uh, jump on the competition out of the gate. All right, riders. Are you right, ready? We're our official start right now. Watch Again, Eddie King, number three, overall right now in third spot. Here they come out of the gate. And it's King on the outside of Patterson, number four. And here comes Clearville at number 15. And coming through that first gate, Patterson, Brian Patterson, number four, coming out. Behind him from the S&E team. Looks like Rod Beckering. So they're coming on the back stretch. Patterson still holding a commanding lead. And somebody goes down. Clint Miller coming around, and we have some toe on that hairpin turn. It's Patterson still commanding the lead with Clint Miller behind. Patterson, number four, here comes Miller. Toby Henderson, number seven. And behind him, number 16, Matt Harris. And those are our top four finishers. And we have a little bit of trouble. On that hairpin turn, Dean, who went down on that side? Well, Rod Beckering went down. He went over the uh, step jump, and he was trying to go in a little bit too fast and cut underneath the leader, and he just didn't do it. That turn is really slick today, and it's uh, we're going to see a few more riders go down before the day's over. Rod's still down. Let's see if we can get a quick replay on that last race before we get to our second pro moto. And here's a replay of that last one. Again, Dean, you were so right to look at the far-hand side, and we can see Patterson in lane number eight. That might be the lane to have all day long. Patterson coming over that berm, being able to get that whole shot coming down the first straightaway, and he hung on to it all the way through. Here we see Rod Beckering in second. Beckering breathing hard on Patterson around the course until he just ended up eating it on that backside. Again, we can see Patterson stretching it out. Beckering really making some good moves, but he got a little bit too far ahead of himself over his bike as we went into that hairpin. The pack's still fairly tight. We can see Lee Medlin, number 15, in third spot there. And Toby Henderson makes a move while this is where the action goes on. Rod Beckering, boom, down he goes. As Brian Patterson, number four, stays ahead of the pack, cleans his way through. And then Medlin and Henderson and the rest of the pack follows through. So that was an excellent race for our first moto. And Brian Patterson right now, who in our point standings is up in the top eight, may be in a position to work his way all the way to the lead. But that's our first Pro Semi-Moto 1. These guys will run again, but right now let's go to our Pro Moto number 2. In lane number 1 is Scott Clark. Lane number 2, Pete Longkarovich, Peter Longkarovich. In lane number 3, John Cruz. In lane 4, John Pyant, number 13. And Pyant's been tough. He won St. Louis. In lane number 5, Greg Hill, and this guy's our current series leader right now. Hill always tough. In lane number six, Tommy Bracken, someone that we've been expecting a lot out of, and now he's finally making it here. And at the lane number seven, Eric Root. And in lane number eight, Greg Grubbs. The camera's ready. This is going to be quite a matchup as we again wait for the gate. Dean, who do you like? Uh, John Pyant, Greg Hill, and Tommy Bracken's right in the center of that gate. Watch these guys take off. This is going to be quite some race down this first straightaway. These guys are all very, very tough and extremely fast off the start. Okay, again, in lane number eight is number 51. That's Greg Grubbs, and he will see if that's much of an advantage or not. Eric Roop with number right, lane number one. Are you ready? Tommy Bracken's number five. Watch again, we were right. talking about Tommy. We did expect a lot out of him. The gate comes down, and here they come down the hole shot. And it's neck and neck with this first turn. Eric Roop with the number one place. Seems to get a little bit of a lead. And it's Roop coming into turn one. Eric Roop. Eric Roop leading the pack as he comes down that center turn. And it's Roop. Then him, number 73, Peter Lonkarevich. Lonkarevich has looked good. Roop, Lonkarevich. And third, the battle continues. The rest of the pack moving up. A lot of shifting still going on. The Murray team, Scott Clark making his move. But it's Roop, Lonkarevich. And 51, Greg Grubbs in third spot. And Clint Miller coming in fourth. Well, that was a tight pack. That sure was. What I was going to tell you is not to discount those guy riders on the 7th and 8th position on the gate. Obviously, they came out of there really strong, and they beat out Brackens, who's a great starter, as is Hill. So uh, those 7 and 8 positions are really looking like the hot position to draw. Okay, let's see if we can get another look at this one. And usually there is a gate position that has a bit of an advantage, depending on the course. So we have a nice long straight, and this is just dead out. Eric Roop able to get the whole shot. 
And we can see Peter Lonkarevich there making a quick move, getting into the second spot. Lonkarevich again has looked good in practice all day. And Lonkarevich just doing excellent maneuvering here. The rest of the pack trying to catch up. As we see Greg, um, Greg Grubbs, number 51 there in third spot. Eric Roop able to keep the lead on. Roop um, was our, our current leader at one time during this Pro Spectacular. And we see him coming around the track. We have Roop again here coming around the turn, and these guys need to finish in the top four. Each of these pro semi-motos running twice. We take their place points, add them together, and the top four guys out of each of these motos will be going into the top eight. So we're going to be right back after we take a quick look at one of our current leaders in the BMX Pro Spectacular. When you put on a pair of Jock's Jag shoes from Tom McCann and put them on the pedal, you notice one very important thing. They stay on the pedal. Jocks Jack, traction for the action. Only at Tom McCann. We're back, and this is going to be our second round of our first Pro Semi Moto number one. This time we've got a few lane changes, though, as they always pick new lanes. And lane number one is Brian Patterson, who is number four. And Brian last time was in lane number eight. He won the moto out of that gate. We'll see how he does in lane number one. In lane number two, next to him, 15, Clint Miller. Clint Miller. In lane number three, Donnie Atherton. Donnie Atherton. In lane number four, Toby Henderson. Toby Henderson. In lane five, Rod Beckering, the man that went down that last time hard and caused a lot of traffic. In lane number six, Eddie King, who presently is second overall in the chase for the championship. In lane number seven, Bobby Woods. And in lane number eight, Matt Harris. And these guys are just about ready to go. Dean? Well, I'll tell you, yesterday they had some problems with the gate, and it has been repositioned to uh, offer everybody in all their respective starting positions a more fair chance at that first corner. So uh, w what we've seen here in the last couple starts is it's anybody's ball game really into the first corner. The seven and eight positions are nice to have, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that whole shot. Interesting to note, for those of you that just joined us, Stu Thompson did not make it into either of the semi-motos. And Stu is always a favorite. He was tied for sixth place overall in the Pro Spectacular Series. And in Las Vegas, Stu will be uh, not a contender. So a bit of an upset there. Also, Harry Leary, who was third overall in our point standings. Harry Leary also not making it. So right now, we have this moto to contend with. And Brian Patterson, who won that last one, would like to win this one as well to go straight into that main event. We are in our semi-motos right now, and they will go straight to the main event. The top four racers out of this moto and the top four racers out of the second moto. Gate is up. Racers on their pedals. The track very rough, very fast. We've had some rain here the last couple of days. Things have dried out. Surface is very tough, very hard, and very bumpy. Eddie King with good lane selection both times. But it's not their choice. It is simply the luck of the draw. Are you ready? Yeah, anybody is going to pull the whole right. shot from that inside position. It's going to be Brian Patterson. Keep an eye on him. He's going to get around to Lee Medlin first. It was Toby Henderson also up there in the lead. Number seven, Toby Henderson to the whole show. Then he came behind him. It's Henderson and King. Henderson and King. Toby works straight out of the lead as he can. Brian Patterson fighting for that third spot. Lee Medlin in third. Patterson on the inside. We'll see what they do. Right, there's Harry Patterson. Patterson on the inside, and Brian takes it away from Medlin. Meanwhile, it's Toby in first with Eddie King in second. It's Henderson again with King trying to get an advantage. Patterson in third. Medlin in fourth. And that's going to have me finish. Henderson, King, Patterson, and Lee Medlin. Excellent ride by Toby. Ooh. Toby won the pre-race here yesterday, and he has been just riding outstanding today. That was a real dead even after, after that gate drop. Straight down the start. Ella um, races handlebar to handlebar. And on the replay here, we'll try to see if we can see Henderson and we'll see what he did to make his move. Toby Henderson, again, number seven. They come straight down that hill, and Henderson just puts the gas on full. We see him coming over that little speed jump there, a nice move up this berm. And Eddie King in third went high, kind of a high line around that berm, but was able to manage to hang on to that second spot. And the rest of the race, the lead doesn't really change. Henderson in command. Eddie making a threat on that back straight after the step jump coming into that um, third turn. Here we see Henderson just pouring it on. Eddie King, content probably just to be under the top four here. Again, these guys need to be in the top four to go to the next round. Again, not a whole lot of changing going on here. The race pretty much straightforward as Henderson and King 
able to get out in the hole shot and to stay in front. We see Eddie trying to make a little bit of a move there, but of not much consequence. And that's the way that first pro semi went down. Again, we take the top four races. We'll be adding up their place finishes. But now let's go to the second pro moto. This is the pro semi moto one round two. And in lane one, let's take a look at it. Eric Roop in lane number one. In lane number two, John Pyant. John Pyant. Again, this is pro semi moto two. In lane number three, we have John Cruz. John Cruz in lane number three. In lane number four, we have Greg Hill. In lane number five, Greg Grubbs, number 51. In lane number six, Scott Clark. And in lane number eight, seven, we have Tommy Brackens, number five. And in lane number eight, Pete Longkarovich. These guys right, right. very evenly matched. Are you ready? These guys have gone through quite a bit of racing to get just to the semis. And here we go. The gate is down. Roof on the inside. Number five, Tommy Brack is on the outside. We've expected a lot from Tommy. Now he's showing us. Tommy Brack is on the outside as they kind of pile up there in the first turn. But Brack is walking away with it. Tommy Brack is with a very commanding lead and trying to catch him right now in second spot. Had a little bit of trouble staying on his feet at 73. Lonkarovic. Lonkarovic continuing to look tough. Behind Tim, 43 on the Patterson team. John Cruz and number three, Greg Hill coming in fourth. John Pine in fifth. That may be some trouble for Pine and Eric Roop coming in the very back of the pack. Tommy Bracken's able to muscle his way down. Absolutely. Doesn't surprise me at all. Bracken's is an extremely fast starter and he just everything came together in that moto and he was gone. Well, let's take a look at that, that last moto if, once again as we see uh, more racing going on here at Rough Rider Park. We'll take a look at that last pro semi moto and here it is. The gate drops. Greg Hill late coming out of the gate. Greg Hill, again, our overall leader, not really even in contention, but Tommy Bracken's number five, just excellent timing, excellent body position, bike position. As you can see a little bit of trouble there coming around that last berm, and it kind of held up the pack. Look at Longkarovich slid out a little bit, causing some commotion behind him, but Tommy Bracken's just blazed out ahead of the rest of the people, and Longkarovich is a bit of a slide out at the top of that last turn, stacked things up enough so Bracken's could easily walk away with it. Here we see Brackens again in the very lead. Things starting to stack up a little bit. No one really even able to touch Tommy at all. So Tommy Brackens walking away with that convincingly and the rest of the pack coming in. Tommy just changed sponsors and that's pretty impressive to, to show that a guy can jump on a brand new bike, come out today and uh, win an event. Let's take a look at some of the money that these guys are working for, Dean because uh, there is quite a bit at stake. Again, these were the cities that we have gone through, and we also should have a purse breakdown of what each one of these $5,000 marks mean. We do have a super circuit price, uh, purse breakdown that tells us what first place will be. First place, $2,500. And second place, a thousand, all the way down, five thousand dollars for each of the stops on the BMX Pro Spectacular, and that's how it breaks down. So each of these guys that can win today can walk away with twenty-five hundred dollars first place prize money. We'll be right back with a lot more exciting race action from Rough Rider BMX Park in Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. Well, Dean, after all the dust settled after our two semi-pro motos, this is what our main event looks like. And we'll be starting off here with our first pro main event. We have three rounds of it. And in lane number one is number 73L, Pete Longkarovich. In lane number two, right next to him, Eddie King, who has a shot to go into the lead if he can come out of this series with a pretty good finish. Next to him, Toby Henderson, number seven in lane number three. In lane number four, Eric Roop. In lane number five, Tommy Brackens, who is tough. In lane number six, Clint Miller. Okay. In lane number seven, Greg Grubbs. And in the far lane is Brian okay, Patterson, right number four. So these are our main, these three guys that this week will run three times. Do we go underway? $2,500 at stake. Eddie King, number three, has taken a whole shot. We have some riders down. Luke goes down. Henderson goes down. Patterson gets out of it. King goes down. A lot of hustle bustle.
also, but Brian Patterson able to come through the pack. And Long Karavich, it looks like, in second place. Behind him, we have Greg Grubbs, number 51, and Clint Miller, number 15. Here they come after this first round in the lead. Brian Patterson right behind him. Long Karavich is making the move for the finish. I don't think he can catch him. He can't. After that, Greg Grubbs and Tommy Brackens. The rest of the pack comes through. Then we have Clint Miller, then Eddie King, Eric Group, and Toby Henderson crippling, falling, trying to get off that track. Boy, a lot of action in that one, Dean. We'll take another look at it here, and we'll see what happened on that first straightaway. Here we go here again. Eddie King, very strong. You can see 3X, Eddie King coming through, and Brian Patterson, both these guys. One of the riders went down to the back, but that isn't nothing. You can see some elbows banging here, some shoving, some banking, going back and forth. It's congestion on that first turn, and that led our leaders to have a little comfort area there to run away with it. And Brian Patterson, number four, heading out above Longkarovic. You like Pete Longkarovic in this series. Absolutely. Pete is going to be the spoiler here today. He's riding extremely well, and uh, boy, he's, he is going to be tough to beat, no doubt about it. We see behind him, number 51, Greg Grubbs, and behind Greg Grubbs, Tommy Brackens. And Brackens is another one that we expected uh, to do well all series long. He hasn't done that well, but all of a sudden, Las Vegas, he's finding his groove here. Now, you can see Longkarovic started in that number one star position, so there's, you know, there's no truth to that, the rumor that the seven and eight gate positions are the way to go today. The BMX Pro Spectacular is a lot more than just professional race, and we also have a lot of amateur classes that run at each stop around the country. And the class we're going to see next is the 10 to 11-year-old Open class, and these are the racers that are in this class real quickly. And then, Dean, I'm going to ask you about this class. We've got Robert Swick, Ruben Turner, Derek Garcia, Jason Holliday, Spencer Sharp, Todd Gus, Jerome Freisenhahn, and Brent Romero. Now, again, this is a 10- and 11-year-old open class. Dean, what is an open class? Well, an open class enables riders either 10 or 11 years old, whether they're novices or experts, to ride against one another. And you'll find riders are riding in both classes. They'll be riding in their expert class and in an open in an effort right, to riders. get as many points as they possibly right. can during the season. And as much race experience also. Again, with the novices, get to see how they do against the experts. And here we come out of the block. It's number one, Brett Romero. Romero's doing a real good job. On the back of him, he's on the Diamondback team. On the back of his pants, he has necks. Like he's just ready for his next victim to try to challenge him. But Brent Romero walking away with it. Okay, keep an eye on Garcia. He's coming in on the outside. He's a very smart rider. He may very well get Romero in this last corner. Jared Garcia in the second spot. But Brent Romero taking a pretty good lead in the first spot. Brent Romero is going to win this one. 10 11 year old open. Brent Romero and Jared Garcia in second. Our next class up is our 16 and over open. We just saw our earlier class go in the open division. And Dean, you would consider this class to be the showcase of the of the uh, pros, up and coming pros? Yeah, you're going to find many of the top amateurs in the country in this class. Let me, let me go quickly here. Who is making it to this main event here in the 16 over division? Fred Johnson, Kelly McDougal, Mike Polson, Frank Francesco, right, Pat right Steele, right. Charlie right. Williams, right. Wayne right. Crosdale, and Mike Manella. Here comes the gate. Okay, keep an eye. Mike Polson, number 53 from Schwinn. He's in second position right now following Kelly McDougal. Kelly McDougal making a good job here on the inside. We'll see if he can get that inside position, but no, on the outside. Coming through is number 53, Mike Polson. Mike Polson, now a big guy making a move here in this 16 open main event. There's going to be Polson over the finish line. Coming in number two spot is Pat Steele. Pat Steele in second place, and Mike Polson winning it. This is where it all begins, you might say. The six-year-old novice category, as we can see, right, Royce Roker there, number 589. Also in this main model, Royce right. Roker, Matt Wall, Jason Slade, Timmy Lynch, Anthony Pilato, Ryan McClain, Shane Thomas, and Peter Fossfinder. And here come these little mighty mice down the lane, Dean. That's 77T in the lead. And these kids are riding bicycles as light as 10 pounds, and they have these special sew-up tires. They're extremely light. They enable these kids to ride almost as fast as those big kids. Now, again, this is just a novice category here. They're not the expert class. These are the guys that are just getting started, just getting underway. And again, we have number 73, it looks like. Ryan McCallan coming down across the lane. That's 77 T. We don't have a perfect number for him. But now the rest of the class coming through here. And this is where that all the breeding ground all starts, right here in the seven novice class. 
Next up is our next up is our pro main round number two. Again, each of our pro mains goes three times. It's the same eight racers in each of these mains, but they go three rounds, and then we have their place points. Let's start right now with lane number one, Eddie King, number three X. Next to him in lane number two, Brian Patterson. Next to him, Toby Henderson, number seven. In lane four, Eric Root, number one. In lane number five, 73, Pete Longkarovich. He's been the sly one. Next to him, Tommy Brackens, number five. Next to him, Greg Grubbs, number 51. And next to him, 15, Clint Miller. So that's how it shapes up for this pro main. Gate positions as they are in the first round. Pete, um, Brian Patterson won with Peter Longkarovich coming in second. Longkarovich on the outer spot now in lane number, uh, actually in the middle spot about lane number six or lane number five may have an advantage. We'll see what happens. Brian Patterson in lane number two. We'll see if the lane gate positions has been any kind of a disadvantage at all. The gate drops in. Here we go underway. Toby Henderson, number seven, seems to be determined. Eric Root, number one in the middle, doing a pretty good job. On the outside is Miller. Then they come into the first turn. A lot of banging, a lot of clanging. Henderson goes over the rail. Meanwhile, Patterson takes up the slack and goes right, right around Clint Miller. Tony Brackett's coming up, sneaking behind Miller again. But here comes Patterson in the middle. He won the first bowl. He wants to win this one if he can. Clint Miller regaining over Brackett's. Clint Miller in second. Brackett's in third. Here comes Eddie King in fourth. And Pete Lonkarovich in fourth. Eddie King third, so that's our finish. Patterson in first. Then Clint Miller, and then we have three more of the rest of the pack rolling in. Let's take another look at that moto. A lot of fast action. Again, Dean, we're getting a lot of pileups at the end of that first moto. Yeah, we sure are. A lot of contact out there, but boy, Patterson is the cool, consistent pro today, and he's really tough to beat. Well, let's take another look at that last race. Again, Brian Patterson, the winner of that first moto, coming back and winning the second one. Here we go. The gate is dropping, and you can see right away, Eric Roop looks like he had a pretty good shot at getting that hole shot. On the outside, Clint Miller held that for leather, coming up to that first turn. It actually is Miller, but Miller loses his line a little bit, goes up high. There's, there's Toby Henderson, boom, right over the berm. Toby had a little bit of trouble, the track very slick, rough, bumpy, and having some trouble with some traction. Meanwhile, here comes Patterson, Clint Miller slipped the pedal, and Brian Patterson, whoosh, right around him. Here comes Tommy Brackens trying to make that move on Miller. Brackens never did quite get around him, but Brian Patterson is tough. He came out and won the first moto easily, coming back here with a lot of room to move and a lot of room to breathe, coming back and winning this one. So Brian Patterson in a very good spot here to come away with a win here at Las Vegas, $2,500 and 80 points to the points chase. But here we see the rest of the race, and here comes Eddie King and Longkarovich. So as we go to the finish line, it's Patterson coming across first. <clears throat> <clears throat> so there's still a lot of drama left in this pro main division as we get ready to go into our final round. But first, let's look at this 12-year-old expert class. We've got eight guys that have worked their way here through the semis and the early rounds to make it into this expert class. And Jason Jensen, I would have to say, plate number one has got to be one of the toughest guys that's ever come down the pike. He's in this 12-year-old expert class, along with Danny Hughes, Jason Wharton, Ronnie Rue, Brad Chabring, Michael Colgren. Scott Hires and Todd Kraft. Dean, who do you like? Well, I'm going to have to go with Jensen or Wharton on the outside, but it looks like Wharton didn't get a very good start, and Jensen looks like uh, our man if he comes in this traffic. All right, we're looking for Jensen. Jason Jensen again, number one, but he's not going to have, he's not going to be anywhere close because our leader right now, as he comes down that back straight, is number 60, and that's Ronnie Rue. Ronnie Rue, number 60, coming through, still in command. Behind him is number 12, Todd Kraft. And the rest of the pack coming. But right now it's number six to our leader, Ronnie Rue. And Tom Kraft, first place, Ronnie Rue in the 12-year-old expert. And we'll be right back with lots more exciting action here from Rough in Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. D. David Morin with you here along with Brian Patterson in the winner's circle here at the Rough Rider BMX track. And Brian Patterson, our winner, the fifth stop of the BMX Pro Spectacular. Congratulations to you. How do you feel? Oh, excellent. <laughs> $2,500 richer and 80 points wiser for the um, point chase. Let's take a look, Brian, at uh, one of your last races here. We'll start with the last moto. Were you a little bit slow coming out of the gate? Oh, yeah. Well, when I was on the line, I got a muscle cramp in my arm. And when the lights started going, I was thinking about that instead of about the race. And I got out, but not that good. And I was way behind. I was in like eighth. I knew all I had to do was get fifth. So I just kicked back down the first straight away and just played my cards right, you know. And... So you weren't too worried about the fact that you didn't get a good start out oh, of the Oh, no. Game. Fifth, you know, isn't that tough. But with how tight this track was, it was pretty tough. I had to make up a lot of, you know, ground past a lot of people. What was the toughest part about the track, did you feel? Uh, the first straightaway was probably the main part. And right here, luckily, Tommy Brackens pushed, went on the inside and pushed someone a little high, and I just followed his line and passed them, passed them all into fifth. And... Worked out excellent for me. Longkarovich <laughs> finished second overall in today's racing. He was pretty tough on this track. We worried about him. 
Pete, I thought, looked the best out of anybody else that I've seen racing today, you know, in all the other motos. And I knew he was going to be, you know, one of the ones to beat in the main if he did make it. Toby Henderson there I see in second. He had a little bit of trouble uh, during the earlier rounds. We talked earlier about uh, lane selection, Dean Bradley and I, and uh, did you feel that there was a factor in being on the outside or on the inside gate position? Oh, yeah. I thought that lane 8, 7, 6 were the better lanes. 7, 6, 5, you know. The other lanes were... They were all right, but you had to make up a few feet into the first turn to get there first. A fast track? A, a tough track? A rough track? It was fast, and, you know, it was pretty smooth, but it was a little little bit too tight. <laughs> Let's see if we can take a look at the very first race. You had a good start today. The Pro Main runs three times, and uh, the first round you came blazing and just walked away with it. Also in the second round you came out and walked away with it. We're going to look at the second race in the second round. Let's talk about the first race, though, when you first came up to the gate. The first race, I had, you know, lane eight, which is one of the better lanes, and I just, I knew I was going to win that one. I got up there, I knew I was going to win it, and I got a good start, and I won from start to finish. The second race was pretty shaky. All right, let's take a look at it. Second race coming up here. Second gate, how about your gate selection? I had the outside, which is not very good. I got a decent start, but not, you know, I didn't get a whole shot, and I was going in the first turn about fifth, and I followed Toby on the inside, and when he pushed everybody up, you'll see, I go on the inside of all of them, and Again, just, Brian is number four here in the blue and orange jersey. Go ahead, Brian. And I just, I pass everybody except for Clint. And then Clint, I don't even know what happens to him, but he just slips his pedals all by himself. And I just flew past him. You'll see it coming up on this jump right here. Slips his pedals, and I just didn't look back after that. Just went all the way. How about the jumps on this course? Some of them were pretty tough. I mean, you know, weird angles and stuff. This next jump coming up was probably one of the toughest jumps, you know, I've seen on a lot of tracks. It was hard to stay low over, but... You know, it was easy to get squirrely off. What are you thinking once you get the lead? Uh, just go for it, you know. Don't worry about what's happening behind you. Just pedal your butt off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look back? Is that a temptation? Every once in a while I look back, but I've pretty much outgrown that habit. Brian, i got to say, of all the racers here, we've had uh, five races. The lead has changed um, after each race. And you won another check today for $2,500. You won the very first race in Miami. In Detroit, you didn't have very much luck at. In St. Louis, you weren't able to um, get to. How do you feel about the series overall right now? It seems that uh, no one's really being able to break away with the thing. And there's still a lot of prize money, a lot of points left. Yeah, it's going to be tied. It's going to go down to the last race, and it will be an excellent race. Should right. be. Well, thinking of prize money and speaking of it, let's get Rennie Roker over here from Roker Ventures. And Rennie, you want to say a few words? Brian, I can't believe it. You won a check in Miami. Now you're winning it here in Las Vegas. You said along the way you stopped to do some work for some kids, so you couldn't make one of our races. But you made the statement that you would be back and that you would be in the lead. I can't believe. It's like Patton or somebody like that coming out of the sky saying, I'm going to be back. You did it. $2,500 from us, another $500 from Tom McCann, over $6,000 in the series. You're a winner. Thanks a no lot. No question about it. Thanks a lot. All right, congratulations to you, Brian. Uh, any forecast on yourself about how you're going to finish up in this thing? Are you going to be able to hold on to that points lead, do you think? Hopefully. <laughs> All right, Hopefully. Well, we'll see how you do. Again, after Las Vegas, we go to Los Angeles, then we go to Chicago to the World Championships. With me now, again, Dean Bradley. Dean, a lot of upsets today. Where's Stu Thompson? Where's Greg Hill? Where's uh, the big guys? Talk about a suspenseful series. I can't even believe <laughs> this. Throughout the series, the lead has changed some five times. And believe it or not, today, Four out of the top five riders going into this race didn't even make it into the main today. So we're finding all sorts of upsets going on, and this series is far from over. <laughs> we talked about, uh, well, let, maybe we can take a look at the point standings here okay. overall, because we just got an update on our current point standings. Here we see Brian Patterson with 200 points after five races. Eddie King now in second place, tied with Greg Hill, who was our former leader. Then Eric Roop, who was a past leader, now in fourth place with 140. Harry Leary down there with um, Anthony Sewell. Toby Henderson working his way up to a tie with John Plant with 110 points each. Dean, we've got two races re um, left. We've got Los Angeles and we've got Chicago. Are these guys that we've heard so much about that have been kind of the legends of the sport, are they going to make a move and come back, you think? Well, it's going to be real difficult to make up those lost points. There's no doubt about it. I'm not discounting Stuart Thompson or Harry Leary or, or even Greg Hill. But, it, again, it's real tough to make up those lost points, and it's going to be a battle right down to the last race. When we started the BMX Pro Spectacular, the format of the race, the way we have one main that runs three times and we add up the place points, everyone said this would determine the number one pro. Are you surprised that there, haven't, there hasn't been one pro that's dominated the series yet? 
No, not at all. With this format, it uh, kind of alleviates a lot of the luck factor that was in there. And riding those three mains, you find out who's riding the most consistently that particular day. And, and luck uh, doesn't quite enter into it like it did in the one you know, main system. What about the motivation factor at this point? There's about uh, five or six guys that are close within reach that can still walk away with it. we got a $10,000 car in Chicago plus another two twenty five hundred dollars Oh, Chicago's even a bigger purse than that. we got a lot of money left. What are these guys shooting for? The title, the prizes, everything combined? Everything combined. But I'll tell you what, if it was me, I'd be going for it just for that car. That is great. That's amazing <laughs> they're giving that away. All right. Well, thanks very much. Dean Bradley with me today doing the color commentary. And I'm David Warren. If you want more information on how to find out about BMX, you, you can go ahead and write the Kids Network, and that's Post Office Box 4859, Thousand Oaks, California, 91360. That's for more information from the Kids Network if you want to find out more about bicycle motocross. So go ahead and write the Kids Network from Las Vegas, Nevada, from the Rough Rider BMX track. I'm D. David Moore, and on behalf of Roker Ventures, we'd like to thank you for watching. And stay tuned for our next stop in Los Angeles as the drama continues on the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. See you later. Position. It's going to be Brian Patterson. Keep an eye on him. We have to get around to Lee Medlin first. It was Toby Henderson also up there in the lead. Number seven, Toby Henderson to the whole show. Then he came behind him. It's Henderson and King. Henderson and King. Toby Rick's turning straight out of the lead as he can. Brian Patterson fighting for that third spot. Lee Medlin in third. Patterson on the inside. We'll see what they do around this hair pan. It's Patterson on the inside and Brian takes it away from Medlin. Meanwhile, it's Toby in first with Eddie King in second. It's Henderson again with King trying to get an advantage. Patterson in third. Medlin in fourth. And that's going to it's taken 10 years for the sport of bicycle motocross to finally get a circuit together worth talking about. And the super circuit has been just such a circuit. Ryan Patterson won the very first race this year in Miami, Florida, winning $2,500. After that, stop two was Detroit, Michigan, where Eddie King came through, won 80 points, and himself $2,500 in the prize, first place prize purse. After Pontiac, we went on to St. Louis, Missouri, where a local from that state named John Pine came through the finish line first to really mix up the title chase, winning that place and winning 80 points and $2,500 for himself. After that, we went on to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Johnstown to be exact, Harry Larry winning that race. And after Harry Larry did his thing, we went on to Las Vegas, Nevada, where Brian Patterson came back and won his second race in this super circuit at another $2,500. Roker Ventures presents the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. Los Angeles, California, beautiful downtown Burbank to be exact, for stop number six on the Super Circuit. I'd like to welcome you all. I'm D. David Morin, along with Dean Bradley. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we have the best race yet on the Super Circuit. Dean, let's talk about this track for a second. Well, David, as you can tell, I am very excited to be here, as are the racers, and with good reason. Not only do we have perfect racing conditions here under beautiful blue skies, we've got mild temps, and unfortunately a rather rare occurrence in the L.A. Basin, good air quality, uh, but combine that with the most technically difficult track that we've seen on the uh, tour so far, and we're going to have a heck of a race today. And don't forget, this is the last race before we go to the finals in Chicago, which is the last stop on the Pro Spectacular Tour. So, Dean, we've got a lot of exciting action to come, and the first Pro Semi Moto 1 Round 1 is just about to be up. All right, our first race today, Dean, of course, is the Pro Semi Main Moto 1 Round 1. And the way we started this thing is with Greg Hill, who is in lane number one. Greg Hill, currently in second place overall. Next to him in lane two is going to be Eddie King. Eddie King currently in third. Or is that Eric That's Roop? Eric I'm sorry. Roop. That's Eric Roop. Then we go down the line from Eric Roop, and we have Rod Bickering next to Eric. And this pro main is underway. The rest of the people in the pack, Kenny Nockman, Harry Larry, and Bobby Woods. And, Dean, we got a heck of a track going on the way. Yeah, it looks like Bobby Woods got the advantage out of that gate, followed by Roop and uh, Leary. But it's real tight going through that first corner and over that camelback jump. Now the first lap for these pros, they go around the oval. They don't go on the interior of the track. They're just doing an oval. Here's the double jump over the water. And all the pros make it, but we have a pro that goes down. Looks like Greg Grubbs is down. He's in the next moto, but still Bobby Woods maintains the lead. And coming behind him is a high-flying number nine. That was Kenny Nockman that went down, and uh, Bobby Woods still has control of it. But uh, keep an eye on Roop. He's been riding very well today. He could very well pull off this uh, last couple corner pass. These are the semi-mains, and each main will run twice. Bobby Woods, number 16, still in the lead. Eric Roop in second, and Harry Leary in third place with Greg Hill in fourth. These guys will be happy to finish fourth, and Bobby Woods is going to walk away with this one with the first place win in this first semi-main. So we have Bobby Woods winning that one. 
Greg Hill again, currently in second, and Greg came in fourth in that moto, but I think most of these guys are gonna be happy uh, coming into the top four since we do win them twice. Now here's a replay, Dean, on that last race. Okay, now keep an eye on Eric Roop and, uh, and Harry Leary. They were having quite a good battle there for second and third. This is, this is the second lap here. A little trouble going over that second double jump after they go over that long water jump. But these guys are really keeping the pressure on. And Bobby Woods has a real good job on this one, walking away with the lead. And he's going to be happy with that first place win because if he can take one more in the semi-main, then that means he's got a good shot going on into the main. $2,500 again for first place prize money. And we're going to be back in just a second here because our next race up is Pro Semi Moto 2 round one. D. David Moore, and again with you with Dean Bradley, and we're ready to see Pro Semi Moto 2 round one. And this is Pro Semi Moto 2 round one. Now, as we have a lineup here, Anthony Sewell is going to be in the first gate. We have six guys in this moto. Anthony Sewell will be in lane one. Then we have Trunell Henry next to him. Toby Henderson in the fourth lane. The rest of the pack, Pete Longkarovich, Eddie King, and Greg Grubbs. Those are the six that have made it into this semi main and we're underway here with more racing action here this is pro semi moto two round one the first round we got a dead heat eddie king somebody goes down dean unbelievable and watch eddie king and pete longkarovich battling for the lead there watch anthony sewell made a great move on the inside he may very well have here's eddie king going by king edward pistol pete longkarovich following him and anthony sewell still in the third spot anthony had a fall was able to get up and work his way back to the pack We've got Lonkarovich now making his move for the lead, and he takes the lead. Lonkarovich in the lead. Eddie King in second. Pistol Pete has been making his up his way up after a bad start in this series. Working his way now through the interior of the track, coming through the S's. Pete Lonkarovich in the lead. Eddie King in second. Anthony Sewell in third. As these three guys continue to battle it out with a good shot to go to the main event. After that, racer 3L, Greg Grubbs, and that's going to be the way he finished. Pistol Pete Lonkarovich in first. Eddie King second. Greg Grubbs in third, and Anthony Sewell has a little bit of trouble in the very last berm. A fast race that got underway very quickly, and Eddie King pretty much had the whole shot, came out and did a good job. Anthony Sewell went down in the first straight, and let's take another look at it. Okay, now watch Lankarevich on the outside. He's a very, very strong starter, and as you can see, going down on the inside, what a disappointment. Anthony Sewell unbelievably got up very quickly. I believe that was Sewell. No, that was down. not I'm Sewell. I'm sorry, that was Turnell Henry, 17H. I'm sorry, Anthony was always in it. But we have uh, Turnell Henry went down, and Anthony Sewell worked as well. You can see Anthony in that shot. Now look at this double jump. These guys are getting a lot of good height over the down straight. And Eddie King and Pete Longkarevich just do a fine job. We've got Pro Semi Main Moto 1 Round 2. This is the second round of this first moto. And in these semi mains, these guys are battling down to try to get into the top eight into the main moto. In this rain, quickly, Greg Hill, Eric Group, Rod Beckering, Kenny Nockman, Harry Leary, and Bobby Woods. And these guys are going at it again. Bobby Woods won it the last time, but Eric Group, number one, getting the whole shot down that back straight with Greg Hill in second place. Hill wants to do better than a fourth place finish than he did last time as these pros come around the outside oval track. Down the, the back straightaway, Eric Group set up for that gnarly water jump, and Group goes way over and clears it easily. Group and Hill. In the background, we've got. Number 25, we got Harry Larry battling for third spot, and Kenny Nockman trying to get into fourth. We've got Hill making a move on Eric Roop. Greg Hill coming around as the pros do the interior of the track right now, and Hill making his move on the back of his pants that says trouble, and believe me, he is. Currently second place in the series, going to head in this main with a good chance of going into the, for the pro main where all the money and all the points are. Here comes Hill, number three. Eric Group behind him with Harry Larry making a move. Some shoulders going on in this last burn before the finish. But Roop will hang on, and Harry Larry will settle for third place with the Bronco from SE in fourth place. Dean, let's talk about that race. We have Greg Hill, who took fourth place in the first round for that moto. He came back and took first. Do you think that was his strategy? Well, I'm not sure if that was his strategy, but that seems to be the, the way it worked out. I'll tell you, Hill is not nicknamed the businessman for nothing. Let's take another look. We have Eric Roop here, who's in the lead as they come down this straightaway. And Roop did a real good job, but we can see Hill starting to put the pedal to the metal there as they go over that water jump, and that seemed to be the difference. Okay, now keep an eye on Hill. This is where Hill makes a beautiful move over the double jumps. You can see Roop gets a good drive, but he flies over. Hill keeps on the ground, gains precious ground on Roop, and then he'll just make his move right here, and he's gone. He picks up the lead and uh, takes it over for the win. Okay, that's the difference that we're seeing right there. 
A lot of the pros want to go over that double jump. And on that side... Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is stop number six on the Super Circuit, and we're watching Pro Semi Main Moto 2 Round 2. This is the last round for these guys to try to make the cut into the Pro Mains. The racers in this race, Anthony Sewell, Turnell Henry, Eddie King, Greg Grubbs, Toby Henderson, and Pete Longkarovich. Those six racers in this are Pro Main, where the, all the money and the points are. We'll have eight racers each, but these guys are on the line and ready to go. And the gate is down, and here they come down this long straightaway, 20-foot high gate as they go over the arena wall into the inside. And Toby Henderson, number seven, realizes that he has to have a good show, goes flying over. Eddie King in second place. Henderson really putting on the burners here as these guys make a lap around the outside oval. It's Henderson in the lead still going over this difficult water jump. And Henderson goes over, followed by Eddie King and Pete Longkarovic in third. Longkarovic, a late starter in the series, but still plenty of time to catch up. Currently in the sixth place spot, tied for six. But Henderson walking away with this one in the interior of the track as the pros now work their way through the interior. Toby Henderson all the way on this one. Eddie King in second as the pack really gets thinned out. Pistol Pete Longkarovic in third, but here on the outside, number three L, Greg Grubbs making a move on Pistol Pete. Pete doesn't seem to be too worried. He knows if he gets a fourth, he's going to be in there. And you can see these guys kind of huffing and puffing as they finish one of the longest courses they've ever run, especially here for the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. Toby Henderson winning that race in first place. Eddie King in second place. Pistol Pete in third place. I'm sorry, no, Pistol Pete finished in fourth place as Greg Grubbs finished in third. So, some surprises, Dean? Well, I'll tell you, a big surprise with Toby finishing first. I'm sure he had to be very, very happy with his victory. Now, let's watch Toby. He got a great start, no doubt about it. He was on the inside, had a pretty clean line, didn't get tangled with any other riders. And again, you see a rider going down to the start as we had with uh, that last moto. This time it wasn't Turnell. All right, we can see Toby working his way yep. down that back straight. A good start for Toby, and he needed to have a good start. He did not do well in the first round of that moto, too, in the first round and he needed a really strong finish and he got one. We had a chance also uh, to talk to some of the racers about how their comments were about the track. It's a difficult track. It's a different kind of a track. And let's hear what some of the pros had to say about the track conditions and the track layout. Harry, right, what's your reaction about the track? I think the track is real demanding. It's going to take, uh, the winner is going to have to be really in shape. He's going to have to be in great shape because we've got to go two laps at 1,600 feet. And the guy who's in the best shape, got the best pair of lungs, is going to win, I think. Uh, the track's pretty long. It's the longest track we've had so far. It's 70 seconds long. They timed it in practice. And there's some pro sections in there that are going to be pretty rough. And so we'll just wait and see, you know, who can go around it and who can't. Uh, the track's a little slick, but it's got a lot of jumps. So that means a lot of air. Well, the track's pretty long and everything, but I think the, the critical part about the whole track is going to be the water jump. Uh, if you're in the lead, it's going to be no problem. You're going to clear the water jump. But if there's somebody in front of you, you know, it could get a little uh, nasty right there. Well, I think all around it's a very um, versatile track. you got a lot of different um, type jumps and um, whoop you doos on it. That's one thing I like about it. The Super Circuit has been going around the country. We started earlier in 1983, and you can kind of get a rough idea of the total prize money and where this tour has gone. We started in Miami, then on to Detroit, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas. Here we are in Los Angeles, beautiful downtown Burbank. The finals in Chicago. And after that, we have the winner of Chicago not only winning $15,000 cash, but also a new car worth ten grand. The total over $50,000 in total price money and the car. So a really worthwhile series, probably the biggest purse ever for these guys competing. We had a chance to talk to one of the youngest pros that's ever turned pro in the circuit, a real strong amateur rider by the name of Eddie King. My first year in the pros, has, has been a lot of ups and downs for me. The first time I came into the pro rankings, I had all the, the you know, the mental psych to come into it, to compete against the guys, but then a couple months later, my psych kind of uh, went away because I figured, you know, I didn't have no motivation beating these guys since I beat them the first month, and I lost it for a little bit. But then I came back later part of the summer, you know, to find out that I have to change my attitude at home and start working out and training day in and day out and uh, want to win even more once you've been there. So that's about it. You just got to you know, concentrate on, on training harder and harder once you beat these guys. One of the things that's interesting about this race, Dean, is that in these semi-mains, we have six racers in each main. Usually there's eight racers in each main. We're taking the top four out of each one. So in the semis, I'd say these guys had it kind of easy. They only had to come in the top four on the average for both times. When we get back to see the pro mains, we've got eight guys 
and that's going to be something else. What do you think about these pro main? Well, I'll tell you, regardless uh, uh, if there's only six riders in those semis, these riders are working extremely hard due to the, the length of the track. This is almost twice as long as a normal track. These guys are working for their money today, no <laughs> doubt about it. We're going to see how they work for their money as we come back right after this. Welcome back. This is Pro Main round number one. D. David Moore along with Dean Bradley bringing you the racing action here at the Griffith Park Equestrian Center in Burbank. In lane number one for this Pro Main, Greg Grubbs in the lane number one spot. Greg Grubbs. In lane number two, next to Greg in this first round, will be Bob Woods. Bob Woods in lane number two. And this guy's going to be something to watch. In lane number three right now is second place currently in the standings, Greg Hill. Greg Dangerous. In lane number four, next to Greg, Pistol Pete Longkarovich, and this guy has really been p tearing up things. Pete Longkarovich in lane number four. In lane number five, next to Pete, Harry Leary. And Harry right now is kind of a tremendous comeback, tied for fourth overall in the standings. Next to Harry in lane number six, Eddie King, teammate of Harry, both on Diamondback, both doing well. Next to Eddie King is lane seven, Toby Henderson. Toby Henderson. And in lane number eight, at the very end, is Eric Roop. Eric Roop in the last lane. This is Pro Main round one. This Pro Main going around the track three times. That is three separate times. In this first round, they're going to be going two laps each. And Dean, this is where all the money is, and this is where the points is. These guys have fought through two semi mains and now they come down the starting lane. Harry Leary has a good shot out of the whole gate, but inside Greg Hill. Here's Pistol Pete on the outside. Look at the man. Break away from it. Pistol Pete Longkarovich breaking away from the pack in his aluminum foil outfit. Here comes Longkarovich down the back straight. Craig Hill in second, and Harry Larry making a move for third. Everybody goes up and over the water jump. A nice jump. Pistol Pete still in the lead as they come down those double jumps. Greg Hill now in second. Harry Larry in third. This is the time for all these pros to make their move. Eric Rube making his move to fourth as the pros now come around to the interior of the track. Longcarabas still in the lead. Then Hill, then Larry. Rube making a move into, into fourth, but Grubbs grabs it back. Eddie King coming in to the back of the pack. But here comes Pete Longcarabas still in the lead. Hill in second. Leary trying to sneak up to get second. Maybe Leary's going to sneak them all. He doesn't. It's going to be a fight to the finish. Longkarovich. Greg Hill, I think, taking it away at the last second. Taking it away from... Our first amateur race we're going to see is a 16 and over open class. And open means that there's novices and experts. 16 and over means there's 16 year olds and older all in this class. Quickly lined up in this class, we have Larry Hess, Danny Mikowski, Bob Caldera, Brian Bays, Joe Chalaki, Mike Monell, Wayne Crosdale, and Dana Griffin all underway. And coming out of the gate, full board number six, Bob Caldera. Now the amateur races go straight to the inside. The pros go around the oval track. The amateurs go on the inside. And again, this being an open class, we have an offices and experts but walking away with it right now number six Bob Caldera followed by number one Joe Chalaki Joe Chalaki would like to make a move this is only one man these guys got one shot around the track and Joe Caldera is in the lead and Joe Cal Bob Caldera is going to walk away with it so Bob Caldera finishes up the 16 and over open with a win most people associate BMX racing with the small 20-inch bikes, but there's also a separate class, the Cruiser class, which is a bigger bike, 24-inch wheels or 26-inch wheels. Now, most of these are 24-inch wheels, and this is the 14- to 15-year-old Cruiser class, another amateur race. In this class, Jeff Wood, Jim Dystek, Josh Morovia, Donnie Smith, Leon Philpot, Peter Upton, Steve Coleman, and Danny Ruby. All in this class. And this is a tough class. Dean, we've got them pretty well stacked up. That looks like number 52 in the lead. And as you can see, those bikes do handle the jumps quite well. Those 24-inch wheels are a little bit more stable than the 20-inch, but they're not quite as fast down those straightaways. In second place, we have Steve Coleman, who's trying to put some pressure on Nader. And Nader's got a pretty good lead on this inside track. It's a quick interior track. Number 52. Nader Akovin in the lead, and it's going to get challenged by number two, Steve Coleman, but Nader Akovin is going to hang on to that lead, and he's going to be our winner for the 15 year, 14 to 15 year old Cruiser Main. And we've got a lot more BMX racing action still to come right after this, so don't go away. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. D. David Moore, along with Dean Bradley, with our winner for today's incredible sixth stop on the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. With me is Greg Hill. Greg, first off, congratulations, guy, on winning an unprecedented three motos in a row. Dean, do you have a question for Greg? Yeah, Greg, how did that last month and a half layoff affect you as far as, the, especially the length of the track today? 
Well, it's, uh, you know, it's not the same as racing. I mean, you, I've been practicing and working out and stuff, but it's just totally different from racing. You know, you lay around and you ride and stuff, and then you come out and you race one of the longest tracks in the United States, and it, it was really tiring. You Some know? of the pros thought the track was too long. Actually, it seems like this is really where the sport's going to, is longer tracks. Were you glad with the length of the track? Was it comfortable for you? I think that this length is uh, probably the minimum. A little bit longer would be nice, but I think it needs to, you know, ease into it and start having all the races this long. You know, like I said, if you have a... The layoff for a month and a half, plus the tracks we've been racing in the country have been, you know, pretty short. So to jump into a track like this, it's great. You know, it's it's a test of uh, who's in the best shape, really. It's not just the whole shot, you know, and that's the name of the game, I think. All right, well, let's take a quick look. We've got all three of your races here, Greg, and let's take a look on your first race. And one, if you can, just tell me what happened here right out of the gate. This is your very first moto. Um, the gate dropped. I just kind of, like, you know, took each moto as it came. And right up about that jump, I kind of slipped. But I got in second behind Pete. And, um, you know, everybody was really tight, and right here I hit the jump, and then uh, when I landed, I kind of, you know, more or less paced myself. I didn't try to catch up to him real quick. I tried to not let anybody pass me, but stay, you know, comfortable. And then I just kind of like, you know, from here on, for about another 15, 20 seconds, I just kind of stayed comfortable, you know. And, uh, you know, right about this part right here, I started reeling in a little bit more and more, and then towards, you know, let me see here, hit these jumps here. You know, it's... About half of the race, you're just trying to pace yourself. The guy in front's going to be racing as hard as he can. As you can see, he's getting tired. And you just kind of pace him, you know. And you uh, wait for him to make little mistakes, you know. And he's getting real tired here, you see. And <laughs> I just went real wide right here. And he was tired. And, uh, you know, it's just, I mean, I was tired too. It's just who wants to win more, you know. And I uh -huh. wanted to win more than he did. Is there a chance the guy that gets the whole shot, since he's trying to keep onto the whole shot, actually expends more energy and may get more well, tired quicker? I think that you're going to spend the same amount of energy. I think you need to spend it more intelligently. You Look know? at this finish. Here you're on the outside, just pure muscle. You raise your hand knowing that you want it. And let's talk about that first race for just a second. Long okay. Karabas with the whole shot the entire time. You're just kind of staying even with him, staying, reeling him in slowly but surely. You just went for it at that last section because you had the room to do it, or what? Well, not really that I had the room. I had zero for room, but I just kind of, you know, I, uh, I paced him, and I could see he was tired. And the more I push him, the faster he goes, the more mistakes he makes. You know, if, if I'm in control of what's happening, then, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make what happens happen, you know? If I let him have control, then he's going to win. So I just paced him, and I found he was tired, and I just, you know, gave it everything I had. You know, it's not really I didn't have on the gate. I didn't say I got to get the whole shot and lead the whole way because uh -huh. I think that if you got on the gate and you gave it everything you had for the length of this whole track, you'd die at the let's, finish. Let's take a look at your second yeah. race here, the second moto. Greg again winning all three motos today. Never happened before in the history of the Super Circuit. Greg, go ahead. Um, this was a little bit better of a start for me. And the first straightaway was real good. Me and Pete was real close. Ooh, wow. And I just kind of like, you know, I got the same... Same kind of attitude as the first race. I was in front, but I just paced myself. You know, it's not like when you're in front, it's a little bit harder to pace yourself than when you're in second. But I can feel where the guy in second is, and I just pace myself to him. And then about right here, I try to just take those jumps real smooth, you know, and I try to hit this part smooth. And about right here, I just, I keep, the most important thing is momentum. You know, you got to keep the same speed the whole way around. And well, then, was really breathing down your Yeah, neck because see, he's trying, you know, if you're in front, the guy in second's going to generally try to catch you. And if you're pacing yourself, you're going to have that energy at the end, you know. It's just, it's, you're all going to spend the same amount of energy. It's how you spend it. You have to spend it intelligently. And, you know, it's a certain secret to doing that, whatever. It's, everybody has a different way to do it, you know. It's just the most intelligent way to do it is... Uh, Whatever works for you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now look at this, Greg. You're still about 50 feet from the finish line there, and uh, you take one look over your shoulder, and both hands go up. You know you already have it won. Is that your kind of racing uh, style? That's what I haven't felt for about a year, and that's why I did that, because I've just been having, you know, off and on year, hurt my leg in the beginning of the year, and just it was like a roller coaster this whole year has been. This has been the smoothest race that I've had for, I'd say, at least a year and a half. You know, um, it's just on this length of a track, it's just how you use your energy. I mean, you can blow it all in one area. You can, you got to spread it out. It can't be like a roller coaster. You, you know? won three races today. I want to take a look at the last race, the last and final race that Greg won today. Again, unprecedented for three wins. What was different about this one? Well, I got a pretty bad start. And, uh, and you also went I actually eight. got a lousy start and I had the worst position, but I just wanted to win. I just kept going all the way on the outside and I kind of just cut in right there. But I didn't stop pedaling up the, up the face of that jump. And here again, I just paced myself. You know, everybody's like trying to, when you're in a command driver's seat, it's a lot easier because they're trying to catch you. It's a little hard, you know, most of the time. But in the third moto, you figure everybody's tired and you got one more race, you know, and somebody's going to win. It might as well be me, you know. I mean, that's the way I look at it. 
Greg, we were all talking about that third race, and the fact that since you had two first-place wins, you really didn't need to come out and get another first place. A, a third or a fourth would have been fine, but you went out on this last moto, and you still gave it all you had and managed to come out with another first. Why did you want to take another first? Why didn't you sit back and play it safe? Well, if I, if I had a choice of sitting back and playing safe, I could have stayed on and watched football today. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't come out here to kick back. I came out here to race. If there's five mains, I'll try to win all of them. You know, if there's 20 mains, I try to win all of them. I just try to do the best I do, can every time I race, no matter how far I'm in the lead or you know, what, you know. All right. Well, it certainly paid off for you. Greg Hill winning the race today wins $2,500 along with 80 points. And we have Rennie Roker from Roker Ventures coming in. And Rennie, hey. Greg, Finally. congratulations. Thank when you. we first started this, you said you were going to do it. I'm and good. I said, you may. And now I think you will. I'm congratulations. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks All a lot. Right. All right. Thank you All very right. much, Greg Hill. Dean, now that we have Greg as our leader, and we've had Brian Patterson also as our leader in the past, let's take a quick look at our new point standings, because with okay. Brian Patterson not here this weekend and some good finishes for the rest of the guys, there has been a change in the point standings. And let's take a look right here. We've got Greg Hill in the lead now with 270 points. Harry Leary tied with Eddie King with 210 points each. Taking a look at that, you think things are going to change a lot more, Dean? Well, I'll tell you what, 270 points, that's, that's it's quite a lead, and, and again, you're only getting 80 points for that final victory there in, in Chicago. So I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's going to be real tough to be great. It sounds to me, Dean, like you're going to make a prediction here. Well, yeah, my uh, foot-in-the-mouth prediction is that Greg Hill is going to be real difficult to beat for that title. Let's look at Pete Longkarovich there in sixth place. He had 150 points. He's made a lot of headway. Brian Patterson, who wasn't here, it cost him. He's in 200 points down and tied in fifth spot. So it looks like it's going to be Rube, King, and Leary fighting it out for second overall, and Greg Hill, if he goes to Chicago, and if he stays as consistent as he has been, yep. it looks like he really is going to be a shoe in to be our very first winner. Yep. Chicago, again, we've got $10,000 in prize money, plus a car that's worth about fifteen grand, I believe, so it's a really big stop, and a stop that's going to pay off real well. Yeah. What do you think was the turning point in today's race? Why did Greg succeed? Why did the other pros be uh, more inconsistent? Well, I'll tell you what, I think psychologically, that first main is what really cinched it for Greg. He rode right around Long Care who probably didn't even know he was there, and and Greg showed that he really wanted to win today, and that he's not in a slump, and that he's as you know as fit as ever. Pete Longkarovich, one of the guys that we were kind of been keeping an eye on because Pete's really a fast racer. He didn't have a very good start early in the season. He had a couple of bright spots through the middle of the tour, and we expected Pete to do real well. Pistol Pete looked real good in practice, and he looked good in the first moto. He had it all the way to the finish line until Greg snaked him. I think that really took a lot of the momentum out of uh, Pete's sails, take a win right out, would you say so? Right, and I'll tell you what, we, we didn't get a chance to see it on camera, but what actually happened to Pete in that in that second moto is he got a flat tire, regardless if, if it was a slow leak throughout the track or if he did it just in that last corner. That did hurt Pete's chances for uh, placing in the top three today. Two of the other racers that we've been expecting a lot out of and seeing a lot out of, Harry Leary and Eddie King. And Eddie King was just flat today. What happened with Eddie? Well, you know, you have you have your, you know, little spells of bad luck and, and that crash that hurt Eddie in that first moto and, and what can you say? You know, it's difficult to overcome that eighth place finish in that first main. Well, that's how it all came down on the sixth stop of the Super Circuit for the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. Greg Hill making a big win today. The first time ever that a pro has won three motos all in a row. And Greg Hill's the shoe-in for Chicago. Until we go to Chicago, we're going to sign off here from Burbank, California, the L.A. stop. I'm D. David Moore along with Dean Bradley. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in Chicago. Bye-bye. The significance of the BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit Series has grown city to city. It all started in Miami, Florida, then to Detroit, Michigan, to St. Louis, Missouri, to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, to Las Vegas, Nevada, to Los Angeles, California. Across the nation, this Grand Prix of BMX has been a series full of winners and losers. A series where the leader has changed six times in six races. A drama that has left a class of contenders you can count on one hand, still with a shot to prove who's the number one BMX rider in the nation. Our current leader, Greg Hill. But Turbo Harry Leary, the veteran and teammate of Eddie King the Rookie, are tied for second right behind. Eric Root, Mr. Surprise, along with the only racer to win two stops on the circuit, Brian Patterson, are tied for third and still within striking range to win it all. It will all be decided here today as Roker Ventures, in association with the Kids Network, presents the BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit Finals.
Hello, everybody. I'm D. David Horn, along with Dean Bradley. Dean? Well, D, uh, not only will we be following the battle for number one pro, but we'll witness some freestyle finalists completing maneuvers never before attempted on a BMX bike. Plus, we'll watch the pros vying for some great Valley Midway video game prizes, then it's back to the most exciting track thus far on the tour for the final race. Dean, this is one of the most exciting tracks we've seen the whole year long on this super circuit, and get a load of this prize money. Over $15,000 will be given away today, $7,500 to the first place finisher. We also will decide the overall winner for the 1983 Pro Spectacular Series. And the winner today, the overall winner, drives away in a brand new 1983 Mustang GL. And one of the guys that could drive away with this thing today, Dean, it could be in our very first moto. So let's take a look at our first semi that's up. Our first pro semi that's up is our A Pro Semi Moto number one. We've got six racers in this semi, and they, these who they are, Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, Harry Larry, Turnell Henry, and Clint Miller. A lot of heavyweights that have been standouts all year long along the tour. We have six racers in this semi-moto. We've got six A-Pro racers in a second semi-moto. We will narrow down these 12 racers to a field of eight for our main event, and the winner of that, Dean, walks away with a check for $7,500. These racers are up on their pedals. The gate is up. Dean, your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what. We've got number one, two, and three in this race. It's been an incredible, exciting race. Here they come down that first straight over the rollover jump, and then to the first turn, we've got number 17 taking the lead, Turnell Henry. Turnell Henry doing a good job, he's getting some inside move. These pros go around the track twice. The first lap, they go around the outside ridge. Turnell Henry, number 17, tuning it up, here he comes for the water jump. Watch over the water jump, followed by Greg Hill, number three. Greg Hill, number three, our current overall leader right now, going into this final stop. Our Trinell Henry still on the leader seat, coming around this big turn. A little foot pedal slip around that last turn. The pros on the second lap go inside through the S's to the inside of this course. Now they come around. You can see some fatigue starting to take place. Trinell Henry working his way down this back straight. Greg Hill right behind him. Things are tightening up. Harry Larry, number 25, coming in third, but on the inside. Scott Clark making a move. Scott Clark now going to second. Trinell Henry and Scott Clark coming around that last turn. Scott Clark putting on the pressure. And Scott Clark, number eight, coming across second. What a moto, and then Clint Miller. And Dean, we've had an incredible moto on our first A-Pro semi-main. We've got our A-Pro second main coming up right after this. Don't go away. There's still more action coming for you. You got to turn off your channel, man. You got to put me on IFB. Because I turn my mic down, I can't hear you to say lay out. All season long, we've been seeing A-Pro action throughout the Pro Spectacular. We're going to take a look now at what they call the B-Pro category. Dean Bradley, maybe you can explain how the B-Pro category became. Well, the B-Pros are essentially uh, riders who just recently transferred out of the amateur ranks. So they're up-and-comers, and they're they're definitely pro riders. I mean, there's nothing amateur about these guys, but they are new to the pro ranks. So it's kind of like rookies, more or less, that are turning pro. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at our very first semi-main. The B-Pros have two semis. We've got eight racers in each semi. Mickey Lundy, Ricky Campbell, Gary Hasselhorst, Tracy Finn, Jerry Jones, Nelson Chanity, always tough, Andy Patterson, and Bob Bigwigno. Can you help me with that last name, Dave? Uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> I really can't. I don't think I'm going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> this is going to be a hot moto. These B pros, again, they're, they're better than the top amateurs, and they're almost the level of the A pros. They are racing for money. We're going to go over their first breakdown in a little bit. But as they come out of this gate, we've got eight racers across the track, handlebar to handlebar, pedal to pedal. That's Andy Patterson out in front, followed by Mickey Lundy. Andy Patterson, also known as Bigfoot in this race, a screamer of an amateur and also doing great now in the B-Pro ranks. The B-Pros, as a pro, go around two times around this track. This is really an experience for these B-Pros to be getting the same kind of racing that the A-Pros do. Right, now keep an eye on Mickey Lundy. It looks like he's setting up Andy Patterson, who's in the lead right now for a pass. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Lundy pulls a last-minute pass right before the line. Again, these B-Pros are not really used to running two laps around a track. Fatigue's going to be a factor as most of these guys don't train for a second lap. Most of the photos are about 30 to 40 seconds long. These guys are racing almost a minute. Okay, D, you might notice that uh, we've got a little, little lead change here. It looks like Nelson Chanity in second place. I was hoping that uh, Lundy would be able to move up, but they're taking it easy. They're conserving their strength for that main. Let's talk about why they're taking it easy. We have eight racers in this semi. The top four advance to the main event. Once the top four gets bunched up or once a guy knows that he's somewhere in the top four, they have a chance to, to cool back and take it as it comes. Let's go to our very second B-Pro semi on the gate right now. These are the racers. Richard Zagers, Gary Ellis, Don McEwen, Rich Cardison, Ben Troyo, Sherman Smith, Chris Crisco, Kirk Crisco, and Richard Carr. These are our racers for the second B-Pro semi-made. 
Again, four racers will advance into the main event. Let's talk about it. Well, keep an eye on Gary Ellis. He just came out of the uh, amateur ranks not too long ago. He's pulled the whole shot. Extremely strong rider, very big rider. And he, as you can see, he's adapting very well to this uh, A-Pro class. Or the for, B-Pro, excuse me. For those of you not familiar with the term whole shot, it's the guy that gets out of that gate first and takes the lead. And these guys are flying over this water. Dump these B-Pros anxious to get the break to go into the A-Pro category where the heavy money is. But they'll take what they can get right now as they fight their way now. Coming around their second lap to the interior of this very high and stimulating track. In the lead right now, continuing, Gary Ellis on the Kuahara team. Gary Ellis is really stretching things out. We're going to see a lot of action here back in the, in the fourth and fifth phase spot because, again, our top four advance. Gary Ellis walking away with it. We have Kirk Crisco in second. We have some battling going on here for the fourth and fifth, fifth spot. Fourth place is Richard Carr. And fifth place, making it into the into the pro, uh, B Pro main, also Richard Zagers. Those are our top four finishers, and those are the guys that are going to be going into the main event. Let's take a look at the kind of money these guys are winning, racing for. Dean, the B Pro purse, a thousand dollars total, and it's not bad. It's more than an amateur makes, that's for sure. First place, four hundred dollars. Second place, two hundred. You can see the breakdown for yourself. Dean, what keeps a B-Pro driving? What's the incentive? Well, I'll tell you what, the money isn't too bad. I mean, coming out of the amateur ranks, the money is very, very appealing. Obviously, they run into larger sponsors, and they get their uh, entire trips paid for. So, these, it's quite a good way to go. After two rounds of the B-Pro semis, we are now up to our B-Pro main event. We've had 16 racers fight down to the B of the top eight, and here's who has made it to the B-Pro main $1,000 total purse for this main event. Mickey Lundy, Tracer Finn, Nelson Chanity. Andy Patterson, Richard Zagers, Gary Ellis, Kirk Crisco, and Richard Carr. Those are our top A pros. These are the B pros. Above amateur, not quite the A pro, but these guys are fighting for bucks. Watch the two outside gate positions. We've got Gary Ellis and uh, Mickey Lundy. They're two very tough competitors, and they may very well end up one and two into that first corner. Number one, Gary Ellis coming Which through. they do. That's Ellis and Lundy. Again, these B pros are going the outside track. They go two laps around this grueling track. On the first lap, they take over a hard bump. Up over the step jump into this turn, setting up for the water jump. These B pros love this water. Gary Ellis in the lead. And it's a pretty tight pack as they go around. Remember in the semis, they just wanted to make the top four. These guys are all fighting for money. Okay, now watch Lundy. He's got to be setting up Ellis at this point in the race. He looks like he's real strong. Ellis might try to block pass him, but I think Lundy may sneak by. We have Mickey Lundy, number two, behind him. Nelson Chaney, we had a crash behind him, but we'll stick with our leaders. As we come down the back straight for the second time around, number two, Mickey Lundy's trying to make a move. Nelson Chaney in the three spot, trying to make a move. Gary Ellis tiring out. Gary Ellis running out of steam. Mickey Lundy, number two, coming across. It's going to be four hundred dollars. Winner seat coming across. Mickey Lundy, he is happy to be it. The B Pro main champion, Mickey Lundy, winning four hundred dollars, followed up by Nelson Chaney and Gary Ellis. Those are our top three pro mains. And we're going to take a run work quick look at that finish, and it's a happy man, Mickey Lundy, pacing himself throughout that main. Here he comes across the finish, Mickey Lundy saying, yeah. We'll be back with a lot more race and action right after this. Don't leave now, the chase is still on. Through after three motos and won a check for $2,500 and 80 points to his overall series standings. After Miami, we went to Detroit, Michigan. There, our young rookie named Eddie King on the Diamondback squad came through, and although Eddie did not win one moto, he placed high enough in the three motos that he raced into for him to go ahead and win $2,500 there and 80 points for his series standings. But that wasn't all. From Detroit, we went to St. Louis, Missouri. There, a local rider by the name of John Pyant went through the motos, blazing the track, and he won $2,500. Ventures presents the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. The Super Circuit this time stopping in beautiful Johnstown, Pennsylvania, famous for steel mills, coal mines, and occasionally this flooding river, also known as the amateur sports capital for international and national competition. Outside of Johnstown, tucked away in Highland Park, East Hill BMX track. It's the fourth stop on the BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit. And hi, everybody, and welcome to this fourth stop. I'm D. David Morin, along with Carmen and Cizo. And Carmen, what do you expect to see today in this competition? Well, you're going to see a lot of action, thrills, and adventure around this track right here. It has a bit of everything. 
has a whole bunch of jumps in it, some cascading waterfall jumps in a second straightaway. Some things we've never seen before. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen them. Very interesting the way the riders are taking them. What about the length of the track, Carmen? One of the longest I've ever seen. It's about a quarter of a mile long, and it's a really a super fast track. It's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting day, <laughs> to say the least. And in the BMX Pro, Pro Spectacular format, the Pro main runs three times, so it's not a one-shot deal. The pros, once we get to the final round, will have to be tearing around this quarter-mile track three times each to get ahead of it. Who do you like? Any favorites in the preliminaries that you've seen? i got a couple of my favorites. I like to see uh, the Avalanche do something. That's Richie Anderson. He does a nice job on a track, and uh, he's a very interesting rider, one of the more interesting, I think. Uh, Stu Thompson's a hot rider. I think he'll do well on this track. It's his kind of track, a lot of short straightaways, a lot of power involved. Our current leader, Greg Hill, over now in the Super Circuit Point standings. And before we go to our first break, we're going to be showing you a little bit of the pros up close and the kind of riding style they can do. Don't leave us hanging. We'll be right back. The Radical BMX is starts with the awesome frame set that keeps him on the jagged edge. JAG BMX World Championship Racing Frame Set. For flat out speed and awesome fork tab design to keep you out front. And JAG's own rear dropout that steadies the ride. The awesome beginning. JAG BMX Mini Pro Model or 24 inch cruiser frame set. JAG BMX, the World Championship Racing Frame Set. When you put on a pair of Jock's Jag shoes from Tom McCann and put them on the pedal, you notice one very important thing. They stay on the pedal. Jock's Jag, traction for the action. Only at Tom McCann. Welcome back, everybody. D. David Moore, along with Carmen and Caesar, bringing you the play-by-play -play action as it happens. First, we'd like to give you the magazine picks, our BMX press here, BMX Plus Magazine, picking Stu Thompson to win it all here today. You can see the rest of the names they've picked for the top eight. Ironically, Stu Thompson has not advanced through the preliminaries. He isn't even in the semis, so Stu's out of the running, and maybe Plus's picks are a little bit out of kilter already. Anyway, that's how BMX Plus is picked. Um, came down and BMX Action has picked Brian Patterson to win it all today with Greg Hill, our current series leader, in second. They have Stu Thompson in sixth place, so Stu already out of the running, a major upset there. Stu not making it into the semis at all. And speaking of semis, that's our very first race coming up right now. Our first pro semi, Moto One Round One. Each one of the pro semi motos runs twice here in this format, and we'll begin with gate number one and lane number one. Lane number one is Greg Grubbs, number 51G. Greg Grubbs in lane number one. In lane two next to Greg is Donnie Atherton. Donnie Atherton in the lane next to him. There's Donnie right there. In lane three next to him is Brian Patterson from the Patterson Racing Team. Brian Patterson. And Brian is one of our previous winners from the Miami race. So Brian's back in the running. In lane number four, John Pyant. Pyant, the one that did it all in St. Louis at our last stop on the Super Circuit. Lane 5, Brent Patterson, Brian's brother, Brent Patterson, um, number plate number 6. In lane number 7 is Ronnie Anderson, and I'm sorry, I think I'm off kilter here. Greg Hill is in lane number 6, that's right. Ronnie Anderson is in lane number 7, and after Ronnie in uh, lane number 8 is Eric Roop. Eric was our current series leader at the last stop. The gate is up, and hey, Carmen, this is going to be the first pro semi, pro semi, Moto 1, round 1. And Carmen, why don't you call the action as it happens? Okay, coming off the gate, looks like the half a pack has the, the move on everybody else. The inside rider seems to be making a good move. That's number four. Ryan Patterson Ryan is Patterson the lead of the And Hill is charging strong and with number three in second. Behind Hill is number 51, um, Greg Grubbs from the Jag team. And Brian Patterson's in well command of this. And we come in the uphill um, straightaway. Is Patterson going into the tricky turn? Hill and Greg Grubbs following. And behind Greg Grubbs, it looks like it's Atherton. So continuing down is Brian Patterson, Greg Hill, Greg Grubbs, and Donnie Atherton. This last turn is a tricky one. You might see some moves being made in this last turn here. Greg Gr Hill's making a nice move. Well, I don't know. Hill's going to settle for second. Brian Patterson making a strong move out of the gate in the first very decisive turn in second. Um, Greg Grubbs in third, and Donnie Atherton in fourth. We're going to look at it right here from the top of that last race. Here's the replay for the first pro semi-moto one. 
As the gate drops, it's really anyone's baby, and the guy that gets the lead gets the hole shot. And here you can see Brian Patterson, who came out of um, gate number, lane number three, really making a strong move. Closed the door on Grubbs pretty good in that first turn there, and that helped him out, keeping him, uh, you know, him keeping a lead. Took the right line. If you take a look at the line, that's the one Hill said it uh, was the hot setup going through this uh, these cascading waterfall jumps. The rest of the pack pretty much funneling him, funneling through, and Brian Patterson just hanging on for all of his might over the double jumps there and um, back down to this last turn. Hill on the inside. Hill to make the move right there. Uh, Patterson closed the door on him uh, over there and then pulled the outside line. It was pretty close there at the finish line, but I think I'll have to give it to Patterson there yeah. by about a half a, half a wheel. The results for that first race, once again, Brian Patterson in first place, Greg Hill in second, Greg Grubbs in third, and Donnie Atherton in fourth place. This is the first round of Pro Semi Moto 1. This same moto will go again a little bit later in the program. But right now, we're in for the Pro Semi Moto 2 round 1, and quickly the lanes are shaping up like this. This is Pro Semi Moto 2 round 1 in lane number 1, Scott Clark from the Murray team. Scott Clark. Scott has already made it into the mains in one of the previous races here, and he'd like to get back into the main for this stop. In lane number two, Harry Leary from the Diamondback squad. Harry, one of the more famous riders in BMX history here at uh, in Johnstown. Now next to him in the third lane is Mark Driscoll. Mark Driscoll in lane number three. Lane number four is Rod Beckering. Rod Beckering. Get him up! Now we're getting a little mixed up here. Rod Becker in lane four. Lane five was Anthony Sewell. Lane six is Robert Fade. That's Robert Fade right there. Next to Robert in lane seven is Eddie King. And in lane number eight is Toby Henderson. So that's pretty much slating our gate for this pro semi moto okay, number two. Ready? And as the gate gets set, we'll see how this moto goes. The gate's down and off the, off the start. On the inside, it's Harry Larry Harry, and it's Sewell. Sewell yeah. Here's Larry, number 25 on the outside, but Sewell's on the inside. Well, that's Scott Clark, number eight. Scott Clark, number eight, battling the handlebar to handlebar with Harry Larry. Scott Clark still in the lead with Larry in, the, in second. They come around the turn, heading uphill. It's Larry in second still with Scott Clark expanding his lead. Eddie King making his move at the back of the pack. Mark Driscoll in third. It's an open shot for fourth place, number 29. Is Rod Beckering in fourth place, but Eddie King making his move. He goes around Beckering into the final turn. We still have Scott Clark from Murray in the lead. Harry Leary in second. And Beckering comes back and takes fourth place away from Eddie King. And in third place was Mark Driscoll. We'll get a recap of that last race. We'll just watch the last half of it, and it's really a, quite a battle here for fourth place between Eddie King and Rod Beckering, who finally ended up settling in fourth. Okay, Scott Clark looks like he has it locked in pretty good right over there. All right, all the you can see Scott really no problem here commanding his lead. Harry Leary comfortably in second, not as tight as Hill was in the first moto, but Leary still in tightly in second place. And then we have uh, Mark Driscoll in third, and then coming in fourth was Rod Beckering. That was quite a battle between Beckering and Eddie King. Those results once again for the first round of the Pro Semi Moto uh, number two. Clark, Leary, Driscoll, and Beckering. Each of these motos will run a second time and we'll use Olympic scoring, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show, to determine their low points to advance into the next one. Carmen, what do you think about the, the first semi so far? And let's talk about Stu Thompson not advancing. Well, that that really surprised me. I thought this was uh, kind of a track that Stu would like to race on. Uh, you know, Stu's a very, very powerful rider. Uh, he just seemed to, uh, maybe he's not excited, you know, psyched up enough for it. Uh, it's hard to say. He He's a very strong rider and a... I was disappointed. He's one of my favorite riders. <laughs> you know, I look up to Stu. I look up to everybody. I'm short. We'll try to um, track Stu down here a little bit and um, see if we can't find out his analysis on what happened um, as far as him not making it into the semis. But our first two semi motos, we'll take a look quickly here at our transfer system on how our pros get together. And then after that, Stu Thompson has just showed up and we'll ask Stu himself on what happened. Here's quickly, here's you can see on our screen. Our transfer system starts basically with four uh, motos in the beginning with eight riders each. We see divisions one through four, eight riders each. From there, we, had, we narrow it down, taking the top four riders from each moto going into our semifinals. That's where we are right now. Pro Semi Moto 1 and 2 are those two with eight riders each. The semifinals will have two rounds each, two motos each. And then from there, we'll narrow it down into our finals. Now, in the Pro Spectacular Series, we take the final moto of the eight main guys, and we run them three times each to determine our winner.
Here's quickly how the Olympic scoring works. We have Stu Thompson standing by on another set of headsets. We'll be talking to Stu here to find out what happened for uh, his place earlier today in the preliminaries and why he didn't make it to the semis. Olympic scoring basically has to do with how you add up your finished place points. Here you can see first place equals one point, and second place is two points. And in the Olympic scoring, the objective is have as few points as possible. You want to have, you want to stay up there in the fourth and the thirds and the second place finishes. Here's a sample scoring if you're scoring at home as these motos go by. Let's say Rider A finishes with a second, a first, and a third. His total is going to be six points. Rider B, however, in the same three motos may have had a first, a second, and a second. His total would be five points by Olympic scoring. The fewer points is to your advantage. Rider B would win by virtue of adding up his place points with five points. Now, one thing that often happens in Olympic scoring is you have a tie situation, and this is how the tiebreaker is decided. Let's say in a tie situation, you have Rider A, who has a second, a first, and a third, and he would come up with six points. Rider B would come through with the same three motors, with a first, a first, and a fourth, also getting six points. To break the tie, you go to the third moto, and in this case, Rider A had a third, Rider B had a fourth, so Rider A wins with a third place finish. So that's how we decide our tiebreaker situation. And if it's possible, I'd like to get uh, like to get Stu Thompson in here. And Stu, maybe we can ask you quickly what happened uh, in the preliminary round. Stu Thompson, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Stu, what happened in the early going? Oh, thanks, Stu, David. Well, uh, I was leading my first moto, and I come around this uh, second turn here after the, the waterfall jumps. Uh -huh. And if you don't take it just at the right inside line, you drift too wide, and the track disappears. And unfortunately, I was running first, and I worried too much about the riders behind me, and I drifted off the track and ended up with a sixth-place finish. So that hurt me really bad. All right. Well, thanks very much, Stu, for joining us. We're disappointed you're not in this race, but we'll look forward to the next stop in Las Vegas, and good luck to you for the rest of the series. Thank you. We'll be right back with a lot more exciting BMX action right here at East Hills BMX Track right after this. Don't go away. We'll be back with some of the best style bicycle motocross has to offer. D. David with you, along with Dean Bradley. And Dean, our next class is a 17-year-old expert, about as close to pro as you can get. That is exactly right. These guys, as a matter of fact, Mike Polson should be turning pro after this race, and he is in that uh, number one starting position there. Mike Polson, not the only guy that made it into this main event. Also, we have Charlie Williams, Fred Johnson, Wayne Crosdale, Bob Marriott, Pat Steele, and Keith Gaynor. And Mike Minnell. All, right, All right. of these racers in the 17 and over expert category. These guys are no longer novices. They right, are right. experts. And the next right. step after this class Watch is to become a B pro. And then an A pro for that. And right now we are seeing this for class in the way. And number 03, Fred Johnson is in the lead. Fred Johnson going to this first turn. As these guys have a lot of racing experience. Oh, we have some trouble over the bottom. A couple of the racers go flying over. Three of them down. But number three, Fred Johnson pulling away in the lead. Johnson in first. Behind him, Mike Polson, number 53. The rest of the pack trying to move up on these leaders, but so far it's Fred Johnson in the lead, Mike Polson in second, and Fred Johnson will win the 17 and over expert category. But we're certainly covering the whole span of racers here today, Dean Bradley, as we now see our 25 to 34 year old cruiser class. Now these cruiser bikes are a little bit bigger than your standard BMX bike, a standard BMX bike being with 20 inch wheels. These cruiser guys are anywhere from 24 to 26 inch wheels. And let's take a look at who's made it to this main category. We have Von Kirchhoff, Richard Diamond, Weldon Nomura, Louis Muscardi, John Lynch, Mike Allen, Rick Thomas, and Mike Jameson. And Dean, what's the strategy of the bigger bikes? Well, the strategy of the bigger bikes is uh, just take it a little bit easy. These guys are older riders, and uh, a lot of them are fathers of the kids that are racing out here today. Uh, one guy to keep your uh, eye on would be number three, Weldon Nomura. He's out in that number eight outside slot. He's the most experienced out of all these guys, and he jumps into a pretty good lead there. All right, we see Rick Thomas. So we see these guys, older guys, are wearing shoulder pads and everything. We can see how Ryder is now coming through that back stretch. And it does look like Rick Thomas is in the lead with a fight going on for second and third and fourth and fifth. And Wayne Nomura gets bumped out by a man who's making a move for the second spot. But meanwhile, Rick Thomas still holding on to the first spot. The 98 is on a tear. John Lynch, John Lynch trying to make a move for that inside, but only going to be able to have to settle for second. And in third place is Weldon Nomura. Dean, this is what we've been waiting for all day long here, the final round of the Pro Main. And so far, Brian Patterson has won everything before him the first two rounds. But let's get a quick introduction here of our racers one more time in different lanes. Lane number one, number three X, Eddie King. 
Next to Eddie, Brian Patterson, number four, who's done two in a row back-to-back. I'll see if he can do it again. Number seven, Toby Henderson. Number one, next to Toby is Eric Roop, who is a former current leader. Number next to him is 73L Peter Longkarevich, who again has been tough. Tommy Bracken's number five. Tommy dominating at times. Number 51, Greg Grubbs, anxious to get underway. And Clint Miller, number 15, on the end. And Brent Patterson is going to have to almost come in last not to win this thing. You got it. We'll see who gets it right here as we wait for this gate to come down on the final and last round of our Pro Main. The Pro Main running three times. We add up their final place points to come up with their Olympic scoring system total. And the man with the fewest points walks away with not only 80 points right, towards right. the overall Pro Spectacular Are Circuit Series title, but also $2,500 for free place prize money. Here we go. The gate is dropped and underway. Eddie King on the inside. Toby Henderson on the outside. Brian Patterson in the back of the pack. Content not to get tied up. In the lead. Everything's up for grabs. Henderson making a move for the first time. Miller on the outside. And in the lead is Long Karavich, 73 out. Long Karavich in the lead. Henderson in second. Shifting is Eric Roop going into third now with Clint Miller dropping to fourth. Patterson in fifth, right where he needs to be. But in the meantime, Long Karavich in first. Henderson in second. Roop in third. And Clint Miller in fourth with Patterson in fifth. And I think Brian knows that he has just walked away with $2,500. That's unofficial. But we're going to have a quick look at this race if we have time. Otherwise... We'll be right back. Dean, what a race. Yeah, it's got to be quite a disappointment for Eddie King falling right before that last tabletop jump. What a, what a heartbreaker. All right, here's that quick look at that last race. Again, Brian Patterson playing it smart. Watch him come down. He slows down instead of fighting his way through the pack. Brian Patterson just sits in the back and waits for things to open up. Meanwhile, the aggro guys are out there full pedal to pedal. Peter Longkarovic, number 73. He likes this track. He's been smoking this track. Toby Henderson, who's been faltering horribly in the first two rounds, taking eighth place each time, decided it was time to show his sponsor and his fans, man, I still got it in me. So we see Henderson at number seven on his number plate making that move on the outside, and Clint Miller just on the other side of Toby Henderson. But in the lead there is Peter Longkarovic, and Longkarovic, who can have his moments of greatness, is certainly shining brightly here in Las Vegas this weekend. Longkarovich coming over the bump. We can see Eric Roop now starting to make his move on Clint Miller in the background there. Eric Roop with number one on his plate in blue. Eric Roop swinging around there. Roop still in the points chase for the overall title. But Brian Patterson, the sly one, after blazing this course and walking away with two firsts in the first two rounds, content to sit in the back and take a very happy fifth place. But here we see Peter Longkarovich coming through here. Longkarovich is going to be in the top money here. $2,500 for first place, $1,000 for second place. And we can see that that's about it for the final round of our Pro Main. We'll be right back with a final wipe up our check presentations, and our new current leader right after this. One of the unique things about the BMX Pro Spectacular is that the Pro Mains run three times, and this is the second round right now. These guys, again, fighting for $2,500 first place prize money. Let's go straight to our gate. In lane number one, Toby Henderson. Toby Henderson. In lane number two, Eric Roop. Eric Roop. In lane number three, the guy that took it away at the last second, Greg Hill, in that first round. In lane number four, Greg Grubbs, and Greg's still catching his breath. In lane number five, next to Greg, Bobby Woods. Bobby Woods, and he's glad to be in this pack. In lane number six, one of the guys that's been tough all year long, Eddie King. Eddie King. In lane number seven, Harry Leary. Harry winning the Pittsburgh race, Eddie winning Detroit. In the last lane, lane number eight, Pete Longkarovich, they call him Pistol Pete, and he was the one that got snaked by Greg Hill just at the last second. That is our starting gate for this Pro Main round number two. Dean, these guys are shooting for 80 points over for the overall title, and the finals again, everybody, in Chicago right after this stop. So this is a very important race for these guys. The lead has changed times about four times in the five races that we've had, and this is a very important race for all of these pros. They need the points for 80 points first place finish and all of these guys are about in the top six or top six here we go the race is underway and this is an important hole shot coming down the line greg hill making some fast moves coming down the line coming up for the first skate and eddie king goes down ed king goes down with a bang and here comes greg hill followed by long caravich again the pros take the outside oval here they come headed for the, down, the double jump over the water long caravich goes way airborne but that's just to hang on here comes greg hill still in the lead over the double jump they take it one at a time harry larry pops them both here comes greg hill right in his lead as Larry makes a move on Longkarovich. Longkarovich simply running out of gas. Here comes Harry Larry in second. Greg Hill in, in first. And the rest of the pack starting to move up. 16 is Bob Woods. Bobby Woods coming in third right now with seven behind him. Toby Henderson. Greg Hill still taking the pressure off. 
and taking a wide margin here, coming across the finish line first. And Greg Hill, Dean Bradley, takes it two wins in a row. We had Hill, we had Harry Larry, Bobby Woods had a good placing in that one, and Toby Henderson. So that was quite an exciting main. Yeah, I'll tell you, our early leader, uh, Pistol Pete Lonkarevich, ran into some problems on that second lap. His tire went flat, and he finished a disappointing last place. Well, let's take a look at the replay here, Dean, and we can see maybe a little bit what happened on that last race. Okay, now as you can see, Lonkarevich on the outside has an excellent start, but then again, Hill on the inside has a, also a very, very good start. Pete had the lane position that was going against him. In that lineup, Lonkarevich was in lane number eight, Okay, and you can see right here, lane. Eddie King has a little bit of problem, goes down on that fast front straightaway, just narrowly avoided by Toby Henderson. Quite a crash down that first front straight. Eddie King is that top rookie that we've been talking about, and King went down with a bang, and that was pretty much the end of Eddie for that second round. Again, the difference in this format is that the pro mains run three times each, and although Eddie had a bad spill on that one, there's a good chance that he can come back in this last round of the pro mains. As far as Greg Hill goes, he's second right now. He wants the silver ball uh, purse money. He's going for the point, and Greg is just doing excellent racing. We had a chance to talk to one of the racers that really told us how it feels like to be on the starting gate. Anthony Sewell on the Murray team. Let's see what Anthony has to say about being a pro racer, especially on this kind of a track. Well, when I come up to the starting gate, I'm not trying to get too hyped up or too worried so I don't over, over psych yourself so you get too anxious. Um, the race is going to be there. So just get up there, get on the line, concentrate on all the things you have to do. This race in particular, we have to go through two laps. Um, the whole shot is definitely going to be important, important. But you pretty much want to just give it all you got till you get around the first corner, start trying to pace yourself in your position. If you're in the back of the pack, uh, fourth or less, and you want to try and move up as fast as possible. But but if you're up there in qualifying position, which is fourth or better, then you pretty much want to stay in that range and uh, hold your pace. And if you can make a clean move that's not going to jeopardize your position, go for it. But the main thing is just to pretty much pace yourself throughout the whole day because being a pro, we have to run two semis and three mains in two laps. Anthony Sewell right now currently in fifth place in the Super Circuit Series. But let's take a look at the points breakdown. Again, a first place win is 80 points. Second place is 70 points. Third is 60. You can read the rest for yourself as we go down to eighth place, which is 10 points. Our current leader right now, Brian Patterson, with 200 points. Greg Hill is in second place for overall points with 190. But, Dean, after two first place wins for Greg Hill in the first two rounds of the main, I would say that, as things look right now, Greg's got a good chance of regaining that lead over Brian. Absolutely. We have a new leader, as far as I'm concerned. Brian Patterson's absence here today just killed his lead. And and, well, we'll have to see him in the next race, see if he can regain it, but not well, right now. Greg's definitely an opportunist, and we're going to be right back for still more exciting race action right after this. We have the 15-year-old expert class right now. The last race we just saw, 15-year-old novice. In the 15-year-old expert class, Steve Yamamoto, Johnny Booth, Steve Williams, Ronnie Gorman, Kiyomi Waller, Robert Eisenberg, Jeff Donnell, and Billy Harrison. And right now with the whole shot, Robert Eisenberg coming down that back straight and doing a nice job into that first turn. Robbie, Ronnie Gorman now taking the lead away, number 85. Ronnie Gorman as he makes some nice moves coming through the track. Looks like the lead may have changed again. No, Ronnie Gorman still in the lead, but in second place making a move on the JT team. Swooping through and coming through to the, to the front of the pack. It's going to be Robert Eisenberg or Billy Harrison. And that's it for the 15 expert class. Our next class up is a 16-year-old expert class. And all these amateurs have novices and experts. These are more experts. And in this class, we have Benji Bradley, Larry Hess, Nick Waters, Tony Maldonado, Todd Meeks, Mike Hammond, Sean Joger, and Jimmy Taylor. And coming out of that whole shot is number 27, Tony Maldonado. And Tony's going to be doing a job here down these back double jumps. The amateurs again taking the interior course. As we see the pros go, they go on the outside ovals. But on the inside right now, Tony Maldonado hanging on to first spot and doing a good job figuring his lead. In second place right now, we have number 29, Larry Hess. But it's going to be no contest as Tony Maldonado in the lead. Number 27 is going to walk away with this win. Tony Maldonado, 16 expert class, our winner in this main. This is the 17 and over expert category, and this is where the guys start when they want to make their move up into the pro ranks. In this class, we have Mike Munch, Kevin White, Colin Johnson, Leo Dano, Glenn Casson, 
Chuck Valenzuela, Shane Hooten, and Bob Caldera. This is the third race today for Bob Caldera. We got a tight pack coming through that first straightaway, and it looks like number 18. That's Mike Manel. Mike Munch. Mike Munch coming through there in the lead, number 18. That's Mike Manel, D. David. Mike Manel. Thank you, Dean. Mike Manel still in the lead, number 18, as we come through the interior track. In second place, number 24, Kevin White. But Mike Manel is going to keep the pressure on, and Mike Manel is going to work through this one and walk away with a win. Mike Manel, happy about that one. In second place, Kevin White, bike number 24. So that's our finish for the 17th expert category, and we've got one more main left to go. Let's take a quick look, Dean, at our point leaders right now in the BMX Super Circuit. The ESPN Pro Spectacular. Brian Patterson, as we said, leading the points chase right now with 200 points. Greg Hill with 190 points, and Greg Hill is the man to watch. Eric Roop with 140 points in fourth, and Eddie King still alive, and Harry Larry also in fourth, all going for the lead in this one. We've got a lot of guys still up in the top points, and let's take a look at the gate for our next race. In lane number one for this final round is Eddie King in lane number one. Right next to him in lane number two, teammate Harry Leary. And Harry had a good finish that last one. Next to Harry in lane number three, Bobby Woods. And Bobby's glad to be in this pack, one of his first mains ever in the super circuit. In lane number four, Greg Grubbs. And Greg Grubbs has been here before, and he's glad to be back again in his second pro main. In lane number five, Toby Henderson. And Toby in sixth place would like to make a move up to the top five if he can with a nice placing in this one. In lane number six, Eric Roop. And Eric Roop is tied for fourth place. In lane number seven, Pete Longkarovich. And Pistol Pete has been racing real hot. Pete Longkarovich in lane number seven. And in lane eight, Greg Hill, the man that has won two motos in a row. And the man that also is in second place currently in overall point standings. And the guy that can walk away with a new lead. Here it is, the final round. The pro main, round three underway. And here they all come. Hard charging down the line on the inside of the Diamondback squad. On the outside, Pete Longkarovich has had good, strong starts. But Greg Hill, who's already won two, is going for his third unprecedented three wins in a row. He'll make it around the outside track. One of the longest tracks we've seen all year long in this pro spectacular. Eric Rubin second, Longkarovich in third. Longkarovich has been there before. Four. Bobby Woods in fourth. It's the Diamondback guys follow in fifth and sixth. Harry Leary in fifth. Eddie King in sixth. Greg Hill still in the lead. In second place, Eric Roop as the pros now attack the inside. This is their last run as the shadows fall as the day begins to end here in Burbank. Greg Hill still in the lead. Eric Roop breathing down his neck. In third place, Longkarovich, but Bobby Woods is all over him along with Harry Leary. Roop's challenging Hill, but Hill's going to try to hang on and win three in a row. And it's Hill, Hill, Hill all the way with Eric Roop in the second. And Bobby Woods making a scramble for third place. And Harry Leary coming in with a quick fourth. Hello, everybody. D. David along with Dean Bradley here at the final stop of this 83 Super Circuit Series. Our next race up is our A-Pro Semi Moto 2 Round 1. And here are the top six racers that made it into the semis. Tommy Brackett is in this moto, along with Stu Thompson on the verge of a comeback. Pete Longkarovich, who's been wild and raging all year long. Rod Beckering also in it. Eric Groove, a top contender. And Greg Grubbs, a guy that will not say die throughout the year. The racers are up on their pedals. Brackens, Thompson, Longkarovich, Beckerin, Roop, and Grubbs. Dean, any favorites? Yeah, keep an eye on Longkarovich on the inside. He's been extremely fast out of the gate today. Also, Grubbs has been doing very, very well out of the gate. If this photo is anything like our first pro semi, things are going to get real even by the end. The track is wide. There's plenty of room to pass. We have some trouble down there. Looks like Stomp and Stu Thompson have a little bit of trouble. We'll get back to our leaders. They come around the outside track, coming into this first turn, setting up for the water jump. And Tommy Brackens, who's feared that water jump off practice long, makes a clean shot as he continues to be in the hole shot. Here comes a move, though. Number three making a move on the inside, Greg Grubbs. Greg Grubbs has had a good year so far this year. He's in the lead right now, followed by Brackens. Dean, is fatigue going to be a factor here? Yes, yes, it definitely is going to be a big, big factor here. Here comes Brackens coming down this back straight on well, the second lap of these pro races. They go on the inside of the course. That's Greg Grubbs is in first now. He got just picked up that lead on the back straight. And it looks like Eric Roop making a move. Eric Roop making a move for second. It is going to be Greg Grubbs in first place. And Eric Roop coming in second place, followed by Tommy Brackens, who had the whole shot. These guys, again, will run a second time, each pro semi running twice. As we mentioned earlier, this is possibly the most demanding track that we've seen thus far on the tour. We understand that D. David had a chance to look at the track earlier today. Let's have a look. The final track at the final stop of the super circuit is a dandy. We've got a nice wide gate followed by a wide straightaway, which is going to lead to a lot of fast racing right off of the top. Then they come over the first obstacle, this rollover jump, and that's when the traffic starts. 
Following the first berm after the first straightaway, the pros whip around this tall bank and over this difficult tabletop jump. It doesn't look that high, but they got to go into this five-foot berm right after it. They come careening up the top of this, up to two more jumps ahead, and things are going to get really hectic right about here. The track fires off into a couple of fast hairpin S's, and then it comes down this back straight where the pros have to hit a very high step jump. There's going to be a lot of air here and possibly some passing while they're flying. The last jump on the first lap is a real interesting one. It's about 12 feet long and about 12 feet wide. But it also happens to be about 4 feet deep. And most of these BMX pros really don't like to get wet. But for those who manage to clear this incredibly deep and wide water jump, they got another obstacle ahead of them. They have to go over the whole track one more time again. These guys are earning their money. I like the water hole. It's going to be crazy going in there like, you know, one behind the other or right side by side. It's going to be... Exciting. <laughs> it's got really good speed. You can keep your speed up around the whole track. There's some good jumps on it. That's yeah, going to be some really good racing today. It's excellent. The track's excellent. It's nice and long. Got some good jumps. The dirt's excellent for diving some turns. You can see a lot of action this weekend. <laughs> There's a lot of jumps, and that means a lot of air. And especially when we're going two laps, I think I think the winner is going to be the best guy in condition because he can pass on track that's so wide. The track is is fantastic. I consider this thing a, a piece of art and. Your legs are going to feel like they're going to fall off your body after you finish this thing, I think. Yeah, it's great. It's gnarly. It's real long. It's got a lot of jumps. It's got, you know, really good berms and uh, a lot of cute bushes around it and stuff. And uh, it's really bitching. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> we told you that was some track. <laughs> it seems like one thing's for sure. All of the racers really enjoy this track. It's a fair track, again, because it's so wide. We can see in the first two semis already, the racers are bunching up. The track's wide, it's long, things are really evening out. Very fair track. Let's take a quick look, Dean, at our first breakdown for this final stop on the Pro Spectacular Circuit. You can see here, first place, $7,500. We'll be talking about cash standings later on, but anybody that wins first place today, Dean, is going to win more money in one race than they've won all year long. We can see our total prize money, $15,000 for this stop. And I would venture to say that that's the biggest pro purse ever in the history of BMX. $15,000 in cash being handed out today. So we're going to have all of these racers competing for this prize money as we get into round two of our pro semis. Our second moto is up. This is semi moto one, round two. This is actually our third semi. These guys have already been around the track and one of the best semis I've seen in a long time. Again, here they are. Six racers, Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, Harry Larry, Turnell Henry, and Clint Miller. Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, and Harry Larry, all contenders for the overall number one. And it's all going to come down right here in Los Angeles for the final stop. The gate is up, the track is down, and our last race, Scott Clark blasted through the storm and came from behind to win it all. To go into our first turn, Scott Clark's the one thick of it, but number one, Brian Patterson. Nope, that's Clint Miller out front. We have two number ones in this photo, you're absolutely right, Dean, that's Clint Miller. And Clint's heading up for the water jump. Here they come. Clint Miller going over, followed by Scott Clark and Greg Hill in third, Harry Larry in fourth. Ryan Patterson broke his wrist earlier today in practice. It's a factor right now. He's in fifth spot. The pros on their second lap going inside of the guts of this incredible track. It's got five-foot berms, a 12-foot wide water jump, and straightaways that will tire anybody out. Here comes Clint Miller, still in the hole shot, building the lead over Scott Clark. In third spot, Greg Hill, followed by Harry Larry. These guys want to finish in the top four. The top four will continue and go into the main event. So our finish for this semi, not much of a contest, as Clint Miller skates away with it, followed by Greg Hill, Harry Larry, and um, Clint Miller. Then we have Brian Patterson coming in fifth again with a broken wrist. We're going to go into our second semi right now. Second semi, Moto 2, round 2, here they are. Tommy Bracken, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarevich, Rod Beckery, and Eric Rubin, Greg Grubbs. Eric Rubin, another contender, would love to make it through into the main event with a chance to win the overall title. Dean, do you have any favorites for this? Keep an eye on Longkarevich. He had a great start that last moto, and he ran into a little bit of a problem. He slipped a couple pedals on the uh, second turn, so I still think he could easily take this race. Greg Grubbs has been a scrappy competitor all year long. He has made an excellent showing through many of the races. He had a third of the first up in Miami. He made it to the main event in Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles. He won the last one. Let's see how he does. Coming out of the hole shot, a very long straightaway. Number seven, Stu Thompson. I told that first time around, would like to make it up. But we also have Eric Rube with a number, number one plate coming around that back straight. Rube in the lead. Stu Thompson behind. Thompson had him crash that last photo. He's going to have to do good on this one in order to get to the main. Over the water jump. Rube clears it. Followed by Thompson. And these guys are doing great. Yeah, they sure are. Unfortunately, back at that water, Joby and Tommy Brackens go down. He's down pretty hard. 
All right, Roof still working on his lead here. Eric, another top contender in the top five with a chance to win it all. Would like to hang on to this lead. You can see the fatigue already setting in. Dean is going to this second lap. Right, Juan Caravis, number 73, in spur, third spot. And then number four and number three, Greg Grubbs. These are our top four riders. <laughs> it looks like this is going to be the final order for these guys to come across. Steve Thompson, for extra good measure, pushes past Roof. Roof really didn't care about it because he had a chance to go to the main event. Dean, can you recap that moto? Yeah, it was a very good race by Stewart. He just inched by uh, right at the finish line. He's a very smart racer. He's obviously saving his uh, power to exactly when he needs it. We talked about the point, uh, the, the prize in the first before. Let's take a look at the cash standing so far, six stops through this 83 season. Brian Patterson right now in the lead with the cash standings with $5,200 that he's won. And he's missed two races and he still won out. Greg Hill with $4,900, Harry Larry with $3,900. Look at this money these pros are winning this year in this Pro Spectacular Series. We're going to be coming right back with a lot more racing action right after this. Hey, it's not over yet. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dean, this is what we've been waiting for all year long. The final pro main, three rounds of handlebar to handlebar racing to determine the number one overall winner for the Pro Spectacular 1983 season. These are the top eight racers as we look at round one. These guys have fought through the quarters, through the semis. Here they are in the pro main, $15,000 at stake. Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Leary, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Long Karavik, Eric Roop, and Greg Grubbs. Three of these racers in contention for the overall number one. The other five in contention for $7,500 worth of prize money to walk away. The Braiders are up on their pedals. The gate is ready to go. And we are having our underway for our first A Pro main event. Twice around the track. They go three times, three rounds. That's a total of six laps. We're underway. $7,500 at stake. Let's take them coming down the straightaway. Looking for the hole shot. Stu Thompson, number seven, taking the hole shot, working his way through the first burn. I don't know how much training Stu's been doing, but he's in the lead right now, coming down that back straight. And number three is right behind him, Greg Grubbs. We've got two number threes in this photo. Greg Grubbs and Greg Hill. But Stu Thompson leading the way right now. Stu, on the back of his pants, it says next year. But he's showing he still may be of some importance, quite a bit of importance this year. Well, Hill has got to be just riding smart today. He's just back in fourth place right now. He's conserving his energy. I really think this is part of his plan. He's going to let these other guys run away and just wear themselves out. We're going to be talking about the point standings and where Greg Hill sits in front of the pack. But right now, Stu Thompson is going for that $7,500. We've got Greg Grubbs in second. Inside, Eric Roop making a move. Eric Roop is going to have to make a move in order to be in contention with the overall. And here comes Roop, second place. Eric Roop saving him to the end to make a spectacular move. Eric Roop making a move. Coming by there and finishing up in second place, edging out Greg Grubbs and Stu Thompson winning that first photo. Each pro main, they go around three times. Then we can take a look at that last race. Look at this finish, Dean. Here comes Stu Thompson. He's pumping. He's cranking. He wants that pro money. Behind him, Greg Grubbs, number three. They're come going around that track. This is down that back straightaway, up over the step jump. Dean, let's talk about fatigue as these guys have to go two more times, two laps each. Right, okay. Now, Stewart is riding smart here. He's a very, very strong rider, so he has plenty of power to, to finish strong. He's just keeping uh, keeping his guard up, making sure nobody comes on the inside of him in this final corner. And you can see Root making that move in that final corner, just edges past Grubbs. Very good move, but... Again, Grubbs is uh, still in contention. He got that third place finish. And, uh, or, excuse me. All right, Root playing smart. We had a chance to talk to all of the contenders for the overall number one spot. Let's take a listen and see what this series means to them. You know, I'm still not that far behind. I'm like 70 points behind the leader, which, you know, anything could happen at, you know, at this race and on this track. Your nerves are really, really racking your ride right about now because there's a lot of pressure on, you know. I, I'm in contention to win it. Uh, I just got to keep my head straight. I've worked hard this year, and it'd be really nice to go home and, and win this race. And I know Greg Hill has a big lead, um, but there's always a chance. And I feel I've, I've trained my brains out for the last month, and, and I really want to win this one bad. And it's going to be an important race to win because it's a big purse, you know, and there's a lot of prizes, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm just thinking about the race. I'm going to, you know, come out and do the job that I know best how to do, you know. The five contenders that we just saw speaking all had a chance for the most prestigious title possibly in the history of BMX. Two of the contenders that we just saw, Brian Patterson and Eddie King, not in the main event. And one of them got bumped out in the semis. One got bumped out in the quarterfinals. Dean, what kind of disappointment are they looking at? Well, as you mentioned, 
in our top three, we had some big, big disappointments. Harry Leary finished eighth. He was lucky enough to make it to the main. What we have is Eddie King. He didn't even make it to the main. Brian Patterson also out of the main. So two out of our top three. Pretty big disappointment. Brian Patterson again breaking his wrist in practice earlier today. And Eddie King, we're not really sure what happened to Eddie. We're going to try to talk to him later on and find out what happened. He was in the quarterfinals, and he didn't even make it to the semis to get to the main event. So we're going to find out about Eddie if we can. Right now, our next moto up is our... Girls moto, 12 to 13 year old. And this is the first girls moto that we've seen all year long. Most of the time, there aren't enough girls to actually get to a main event, but this time we have enough. And let's look quickly at who they are. Julie Tapia, Connie Leitner, Peggy Oparka, Ray Andrews, Gina Mobley, Dina Robertson, Sarah Jane Nichols, who's here from England, and Sherry Elliott. All of the girls Again, the 12 to 13 year old bracket. Dean is BMX a girl sport. Well, obviously, here we got a full gate of girls, and you'll be really surprised uh, about their abilities. They're very, very strong, and they're, they're great athletes. Why don't you keep an eye on Sherry Elliott? She is in the outside position. She has those max style wheels. She just pulled the whole shot. Sherry Elliott, I understand, is one of the top women BMX racers in the country. These are amateur girls. They are only racing one lap, so they immediately go into the inside S's of our track. Here comes Sherry Elliott, still in first place, 1B on a number plate. She works her way down the back. Straight. Again, these girls, 12 to 13 years old, and these girls are making their mark against the guy. Sherry Ellen, as I understand, actually can beat a lot of guys that race. Yeah, she can. She prefers to race with the boys, as a matter of fact. It's a, she considers it much better competition. As you can see, easy victory for Sherry. Sherry Elliott, our winner here for the girls' 12 to 13-year-old main event. We'll take a look, Dean, now at our point standings. We saw our contenders and their points coming into this main event. Greg Hill still alive and kicking. 270 points. Some people thought he was out of reach. We'll have to see what happens. Harry Leary in second place with 210 points. Still within reach of Greg. We're going to look at our point breakdown. But if Harry wins, he wins 80 points. If Greg takes eighth, he wins 10 points. In which case, Harry Leary would go ahead with 10 more points than Greg. That's our point breakdown once again. First place, 80 points. Second place, 70 points. Harry Larry with 210 points. Eric Rube is still alive and kicking with 200 points. He still has a shot for the overall. The best Eric can do actually is a tie with Greg. That's our point breakdown. The A Pro Main Round 2 now at the gate. Again, these guys shooting for $15,000 in total purse money. Here they are again, our main event of the A Pro. Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Larry, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarovich, Eric Roop, and Greg Grubbs. First time around, Stu Thompson came and won it all. Harry Larry, the guy that's in contention for the overall spot against Greg Hill, who's also in this main event. Harry Larry took a seventh. Dean, he's got to be in the number two or number one spot to even think about winning it over. Right. Harry has no time to lose. He's got to do very, very well in this race to stay in contention. If not, he can just write it off and go home. Right. Meanwhile, Greg Hill's been playing it very cool. Came in third last place. All Greg needs is a seventh or better to finish as the overall number one pro for 1983. Stu Thompson gets the whole shot again. And here comes stopping Stu on the outside lap. Again, these pros going around twice. Stu working on He's trying to get two wins in a row if he can. Behind him, Greg Hill, number three. And Pete Longkarovich, the wily one that we thought might do something. Right, watch Longkarovich. He looks real mean going down that straight. He could very well pass Hill. I'm not sure that Stewart even knows those guys are in back of him. Riding an extremely strong race. This is the old Stu that we used to see. It sure is. We wonder what happened to Stu Thompson this season, but he's certainly making his mark here at the very final stop in Los Angeles, California. Stu Thompson, number seven, coming around. They go on the inside of the track. This is the second and final lap of round number two. We have one final round. Stu Thompson in first. Greg Hill in second. This may sew it up for Greg to be overall number one pro. Pete Longkarovich, who we like, is now coming through and doing a good job. Third to Harry Larry and making a last-minute move against Scott Clark to sew up fourth place. Dean, maybe we can look at that finish one more time to see the action from Harry Larry. Harry knows that he's going to have to really work on his overall finishes, and if Harry's going to do anything to give Greg Hill a chance for money, he's going to have to place up. Here comes the water jump, and we see Stuart Thompson coming around this berm, coming up, and overheading straight from the inside of the track. This is our second and final lap over the whoop de doos Greg Hill right behind him. We're going to watch Harry Larry, though. Pete Longkarovich in third. We have Roop and Harry Larry fighting between fourth and fifth. Larry puts on a strong effort. Harry, again, trying to get through and trying to get some higher place points. We're going to talk about Olympic scoring a little bit later. 
but right now we're going to talk to Eddie King, who has been an incredible contender all year long, and he is only a rookie. Eddie, you gave the pros a run for your money, but let's talk about why you didn't make it to the main event. You had, I guess, some trouble in the quarterfinals. Well, uh, the competition today has been probably the best it's been all year. There's five motos, and as you can tell now in the main events, these guys are just, they're going all out. And it's just... <laughs> It kind of makes me wonder if I should really be in there with those kind of guys because they're unreal right now. Eddie, i got to argue with you right away because I think this is only the first time since Miami that you haven't made it to the main event. Every one of the stops on the Super Circuit, you've been right in there in the thick of it. What do you think was the difference today for you? I don't know. I think maybe those guys' intensity level was a little bit more up than mine was because they're going all out. It's unreal to watch these guys. Was it the prize money? $15,000 at stake for, um, you know, for total purse and also the car at stake. For Stu Thompson, this is the prize money, but for, for, Harry, for Harry Larry and Eric Roof and those guys, it's the car. They're going all out. Eddie, you can't really feel bad. Um, where do you think your heads are right now, and how do you look for the next year and for the next season? Well, I'm looking for uh, just to improve on what I've been doing this year. You know, I've learned a lot this year that I just, you know, it's hard to explain. Well, congratulations to you, guy. You had a really great season for your first time out. I think I know that you've impressed a lot of the viewers and a lot of the BMX race fans all around the country. We still have a real interesting fight for second place. Harry Larry and Eric Group going pedal to pedal around these three main events to see who can come out number two. And it looks right now that Greg Hill, who came into this race as our leader, is going to walk out of this race our number one overall pro. We'll be right back with more after this. Don't go away. Stay and see who wins the number one play. Ladies and gentlemen, our 1983 winner for the BMX Pro Spectacular Final, Greg Hill, who put it all together and came back and won the very last moto of today's race. Greg, congratulations to you. Excellent racing all year long. Before we take a look at your last moto, I understand that your wife's in the hospital about to give birth. What was racing like today, knowing that that was about to happen? Well, fortunately, I didn't know. I knew that she was going to be home with a friend today and stuff, but I didn't know she was going to go into labor. And, you know, everybody here knew, my parents and stuff, but they didn't tell me until after the race. So, you know, it's kind of like a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> An emotional high for both of you, yeah. not only for your wife and yourself. Let's take a look, Greg, at your last race. I'd like you to take it from the starting gate. And if we can just kind of go pedal by pedal on what okay. happened, here it is. Well, off the gate, like, you know, to prepare myself for the race, I just thought championship race, you know, get out, get in the top five, and you got it made. But I found myself getting a really well start. So I just kind of like, you know, I just went for it. You know, I, I was not going to, you know, if I was going to wind up in the middle of the pack, I was just going to be safe, but I wound up being in front, so I just went all the way, you know. So the whole shot was almost an accident. Again, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Greg Hill, number three in the lead. I just, like, didn't think about the whole shot, and I just thought about winning the series, you know, and um, turned around being that I got the whole shot and won the race, and Stu did, got back far enough to where I could win, you know. So that was really a big, you know, it didn't really hit me at the finish line. You know, I just thought I knew I won. The championship, but then when I come across the line and look back and see Stewart back there, I thought, cool, you know, I you know I won the <laughs> race also. So it was really stoked, and then about six seconds later, I heard my wife went into labor, so it's oh just a really... Oh, my gosh. Greg, can you just describe the track to us here as we take a look at you flying over that step jump? What was the track like, and how did it feel to you? Well, the track, that race was probably the best race, because I hadn't led one race all day. You know, I'd just been playing it safe. And I got out there, and the track felt really smooth, and I felt good, and I wasn't getting tired, you know, and my momentum didn't slow up any. I really felt really good. You know, the track was really nice. We have a water jump taken, uh, coming up here at this one. Let's take a look at this water jump. What's that jump like to go over? Um, it's a little bit easier than it looks. It's just like, you know, you got to hit it and you got to push down because it's got a nice lip on it and you can really get a lot of air off of it, you know, so you just got to hit it and push down more like a speed jump type of deal, you know. Let's talk about the uh, Pro Spectacular as a series. What's it meant to you to win this thing? We've, um, we've heard some of your thoughts on it before, but now that you are the actual, the overall number one pro, how does it feel? Well, uh, it's kind of like indescribable. I mean, I've been pro for six years, and I've never earned a number one pro plate, and it's just, you know, right now, I won the race, and I'm really pumped, but tomorrow when I wake up, my brains are going to probably fall out, because that's when I realize it, you know? Well, here you are doing a fine job holding off Harry Larry as we go in over those little whoop de doos Were those much trouble for you? Not really, no. I was just kind of like, I could sense that somebody was like right there, and I was really tired, but I just kind of pushed it till the end, you know. I knew at that point if someone passed me, I'd still win the championship, but I didn't know, you know, by, I didn't know I was going to win the race also. I thought, I didn't know, have any idea where Stu was, you know, so... <laughs> well, there's our historic finish. You were able to hold off Stu Thompson, and we've got not only a check for $7,500, which we're going to be getting to, but also we have a brand new automobile, a new Mustang for our winner, Greg Hill. Driving the car happens to be Rennie Roker, the man responsible for the BMX Pro Spectacular <laughs> well, Series. Well, 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 how about this? $7,500, a brand new car, a brand new company, 
a team trophy, a brand new baby on the way. What, what else, Craig? I mean, where, I don't know, where do man. we go from here? I don't know. You know, I must say this to you in all sincerity. When we started this, I remember calling you on the phone and saying, Greg, what do you think if we tried to get a world champion professional rider? And you said, you know, we need that because it's never been done. Yeah. I remember pulling the other pros, and I also remember the magazines calling me saying, I just got a call from Greg Hill saying, there's a great idea going around. We ought to get behind it. Yeah. It all started with that phone conversation. Yeah. It's I was really pumped about it, you know, because it hasn't been that way. It's been, you know, every year it's the points are really not fair, and it comes down to the last race, and there's not a race series that everyone thinks this is the best, and this year this was, you know, I'm not saying that because I won, but you can ask any pro, you know, they'll tell you this series is like the most prestigious, you know. I mean, there's TV coverage, there's money, and it's just, aside from, from all the pros saying it's the best, that's just, that confirms it right there, you know. Well, you know something? I want to thank you for that, because... The sincerity that, that you deliver is something that means a lot to, to myself, my wife, Kids Network, Great. all of us. And your brother-in-law took second. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, time out. <laughs> David, I think we ought to do something about this. Okay. His brother-in-law takes second. He wins. His wife has a baby. The team trophy comes. I mean, this is ridiculous. The guy's got everything. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The best man won, Thanks. without a doubt. Thank you. All right, well, Granny, if you don't mind, I think Greg's in an appointment at the hospital, as his wife is in labor. Yeah. You've got the car right here, Greg, but you just want to jump on in and get on the road. Oh. Not a better time in the world to win your own car, all right? <laughs> Greg Hill, our 1983 overall winner for the BMX Pro Spectacular Series. <laughs> he says, maybe I'll go to Vegas in it. <laughs> Renny, I'd like to talk to you about the format of the Pro Spectacular Series and about the people that have made it happen. We started again with an idea, Greg Hill, one of the pros that actually made it happen, to come up with a race system that just wasn't on the luck of one race, but actually on the luck of going around three times to prove your overall winner. Let's talk about the format and again the people that have made the BMX Pro Spectacular a reality. The BMX Pro Spectacular started out in the, in the minds of myself and my wife, who's my partner also in Kids Network, Roker Ventures. Uh, we were able to secure ESPN in the beginning, which really got it going television-wise. And now we're in 26 countries, and it's uh, it's amazing. The the following the 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 things that have happened because of this series. We now have BMXs who are recognized by major people. But more important is the backers. It's the people that supported us: Coca-Cola, Tom McCann, Bally Midway. Uh, Swiss Miss Pudding Bars, and the, and, the, and the names go on and on and on. And, and these people are the ones who really said, when we went to them and said, look, we've got an idea. We, we feel that the sport is at a point where it should be recognized on television. Would you help us? They came behind us. All right, Rennie, let's take a quick look here at an address. A lot of people interested in BMX, they can write to Kids Network. And right now we have the address for you for the Kids Network, Post Office Box 4859, Thousand Oaks, California, 91360. Kids Network, the people behind the BMX Pro Spectacular. Thank you all for watching. I'm D. David Moore, along with Rennie Roker. Thanks for watching.